Hi, I'm Miley Cyrus. You've probably heard some of my songs like Wrecking Ball, The Climb, and Flowers from my latest chart-topping album, Endless Summer Vacation, although my most loyal fans have known me since my Disney Channel days. This story isn't about me, though. Today I'm narrating the life of a young star from the South, just like me. I'll tell you why later. For now, please like and subscribe. I know all about being famous at a young age. And trust me, no glory comes without blood, sweat, and tears. And Scarlett Spencer was no exception. Her journey to stardom began in a small town in Texas. Her mother passed away long ago. Still, she grew up happily with her dad who owned a little diner and her baby sister, Naomi. These two were polar opposites. The quiet, introverted Scarlett helped out at the diner, while Naomi, who was in high school, lived and breathed social media. Give me a phone, mine's out of juice. Man, this brick's been only to call and text for years. It should have something new. In case you still haven't figured it out, well, Naomi's creating an Instagram account under her sister's name to post pics. Give it back. I need it now. Naomi, I already said I don't like social media. What's with this photo and the Ritz-Carlton and ridiculous caption? We were just there for dad's delivery. Relax. Everybody has a social media presence these days. That photo will get you tons of hearts and followers. Honestly, if my sister ever did that to me, she would have been six feet under by now. But Scarlett let Naomi off the hook, because to her, Naomi was her bestest friend, who she could tell everything to. While Scarlett was the best sister she could ask for, Naomi knew she'd never find anyone else who'd satisfy her every whim like that. They frequented this spot by the lake for a stroll, a jog, or simply pouring their hearts out. I wanna go where culture is, like New York or LA. The only thing exciting in this town is probably a party bus that comes by every millennium. <sighs> You're a big dreamer, and that's good, but isn't a peaceful and quiet life nice too? <laughs> Bless their hearts. They have no idea what's in store for them, but it's really hard to imagine that their uneventful lives could change. All of a sudden, when their dad got in an accident and lost his job, with no relatives, the family was dealt the worst hand. Scarlett alone couldn't manage the diner, dad's medical bill, as well as Naomi. Then one day, their dad set them down, looking seriously insistent. I know that this is a lot to take in, but your mother, she's still alive. This is her. What? We got divorced and cut all Taz long ago. I never spoke of it because it's too complicated. Now that your old man is in this situation, you should go to your mother and shouldn't have to suffer because of me. Both of them were too shocked to speak. Scarlet went to her room, the photo squeezed tightly in her hand. Is this really my mother? When are we leaving? What are you excited about? All we have is this address and her photo. What if she won't accept us as her daughters? She abandoned us all those years, remember? It's still worth a try. Do you know I've lost count how many times I've wished for a mother? And then this happened like a miracle. Scarlet tossed and turned all night because of what her father revealed just now, while Naomi thought long and hard about what she would wear. The next morning, the sisters got up early and went to the address on the note, which led them to a magnificent building, Elite Talent Management. They stepped inside with bewilderment written all over their faces. Excuse me, we're looking for Mrs. Athena Kinsley? Perfect timing. Miss Kinsley's here this week for our statewide audition. In fact, she's right behind you. They were both in awe to see a woman who exudes sophistication and confidence. Naomi rushed to her. Excuse me, ma'am, are you Athena Kinsley? The woman gracefully turned around, lowered her shades, and scanned them both from head to toe. Hello, I'm Naomi Spencer, and this is my sister Scarlett. We, uh, believe you're our mother. Uh, um, does the name Joseph Spencer ring any bell to you? He's our dad. He told us to come find mom. I mean, you. That was awkward, but they got a reaction out of the Ice Queen. She was shooketh, but quickly regained composure. You two, come with me. Clear my schedule. The girls followed her with uncertainty. When they reached the elevator, everyone inside immediately got out. Some of them even bowed to her. During the elevator ride, Scarlett and Naomi looked at each other in confusion about this lady who's supposedly their mother. Athena got down to business as soon as the door closed. I thought your father wanted you to forget that I existed. But here you are. Start talking. While Scarlett talked, Naomi looked around Athena's office with great excitement. Her eyes lit up when she saw a photo of Athena with Beyonce. Dad needs... Did you work with Beyonce? <clears throat> yes, she's still one of my clients. Miley Cyrus, Jennifer Lawrence, Britney Spears. I've worked with all of them. Surprise! The truth's finally out. I actually agreed to tell this story to return a favor Athena did for me when I parted ways with Disney. Rough times, but totally worth it. Okay, continue. As I was saying, Dad needs physical therapy and a private nurse, but we can afford neither. He needs your help. Mm -mm, Mom? This is the first time we've spoken in so long, and you're just asking for money? I'm afraid it can't be that easy. 
Really? This is our father, your ex-husband. Jeez, why did I even bother coming here asking the person who abandoned us for help? Naomi, we're leaving. Sit down. I didn't say no, but I won't hand you a huge bag of cash for nothing. Instead, you can work for it. You do have a pretty face and quite a feisty character, and I have everything you'd need to get far in this business. How does that sound? That took a turn, but Naomi was even more surprised than I am. Why isn't mom asking her, but only her sister? Her introverted anti-social media sister? No thanks. I want a nice breezy laugh and zero limelight. We'll figure something out. Without you! On their way home, Naomi kept nagging Scarlet for refusing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. She left us! That was the first time we met after so long, yet she didn't fake a smile and even try to exploit us. Can't you see that? No! You assume she abandoned us. Dad kept her a secret all these years, so we must have lied about that too. Mom's offer is a win-win deal. Don't you see how respected she is? Despite seeing Naomi's point, Scarlet was still stubborn. The way I see it, they don't have much time to argue, because right at that moment, their dad was having a heart attack. Luckily, the girls arrived home right on time and brought him to the ER. After hours in the ICU, his condition became stable, but needed further observation. Scarlet's face got paler with every word the doctor said about her father's treatment. I'm no accountant, but this bunch of hospital bills surely sounds bad. Sis, mom's office still stands. Do something before it's too late! Scarlet reluctantly came to see Athena again. Before signing, Scarlet had a few demands. She'd receive a fair cut of the profit and will not owe Athena anything once the contract is no longer in effect, as well as a signing advance. Also, per contract, Athena would be Scarlet's manager. Hmm, this is actually very common. My mom Tish has been my manager to this day, but that's me. I can't talk about her case. Scarlet immediately transferred her dad to the best hospital in Texas. Looking at his unconscious state, she got all the motivation she needed before leaving for the city, thoughts about her future swirling in her mind. From the start, Scarlett said she didn't want anyone to know they're related. Athena, being the professional she was, agreed. Then, Operation Ultimate Fashionista commenced. First off, an extensive daily workout for three hours with a personal trainer. Scarlett was used to physical labor, so she didn't break a sweat. But when she found out about the strict diet she had to follow, Scarlett realized she's in hell. What's wrong with you? You make me work out, but don't let me eat? Silly girl. Don't you know the cameras add 10 pounds? You'll look like a manatee in your photos unless you lose weight. Almost forgot. Scarlett moved into Athena's mansion for her private training, while Naomi stayed home for school. At the moment, Scarlett was lonely on an empty stomach. I can understand how she's feeling, because I went through the same ordeal when I started touring at age 13. Scarlett decided to sneak out in the middle of the night to search for food. However, Athena was one step ahead and already locked the pantry. Hey, sis, you caught me in the middle of my midnight supper. <sighs> oh my god, this food is bussin'. Anyway, how's dad? I can't hear you. What's the weird noise? The sound of my pain and suffering. Watching you mukbang sure made it worse. Bye! And I'm sick of this food and this life. I need to find out how I can move to the city. Meanwhile, poor Scarlet could only sleep off her hunger, as she had to be up at six for training. Show business doesn't only demand talent and looks, but also the ability to handle being in the public eye. Sometimes you're a slip of tongue away from fading into oblivion. Media training was invented so we can learn to be public figures. That entire morning was spent on correcting Scarlett's posture, walk, and mannerisms. One more time, action! Hi, besties! Get ready with me to go to a ball! Stop! What now? Your accent. It's too distracting. Should we get rid of it? Perhaps tone it down a bit. It'll make her stand out. But we don't want too many risks. Risks? This is how I talk! Not anymore. That's enough for today. Thanks for coming in. Scarlet, of course, had no say in any of this. Now Athena's the one driving, and Scarlet's only in the passenger seat. Is she trying to make me a star or a slave? Can't she at least not look like Grumpy Cat and sound like a dictator all the time? Jeez, I have to learn strange stuff and change so much about myself. There's nothing wrong with my way to accent. What's all this for? Sis, everyone who wants to be famous has to learn everything you just said. And the people mom works with are all big names in the industry. So cool. Mom, to her, I only exist during business hours. I'm sure she wants the best for you. How about this? Ask her if I could come live with you. I could be your mediator. The responsible big sister side of Scarlet thought that's not a great idea, but the lonely teenager in her was craving some company. So, she asked and got Athena's approval right away. Naomi coming here is like returning to her natural habitat. This is amazing. Thanks, Mom. I can't wait to see this city. I don't have time to show you around. But here, take a cab and buy yourself something. Is it just me, or does she seem to get along much better with Mom?
I totally see it too, Scarlett. When Scarlett's image became much more marketable, Athena got her her first ever fashion photo shoot. But since this was Scarlett's first time modeling, she struggled the whole day, but couldn't seem to have any good shots. Let's try again. Remember, we want clean, athletic, smiley. Yeah, and she's giving dirty, tired, and paunchy. Everyone take ten. That's it! Look at all this stuff, guys. Isn't it crazy? Ah! What's wrong? Talk to me. I can't take this anymore. She is vicious. She doesn't give a flying crap that I beat myself up trying and orders me around like a puppet. This is draining me day by day. I'm exhausted. Naomi could only offer little comfort pats while listening to Scarlett's rant, but she's secretly thinking that her sister didn't know this was the life that others would kill to have. Little did Scarlett know, Naomi came to Athena immediately afterward. Mom, I want to be famous too. Make me. Sorry, that's a no. What does Scarlett have that I don't? I can do everything she does with a smile. You're only seeing this at a surface level. Scarlett's got that X factor. That's why I chose her. She's special, and you're not. That's it. She doesn't want that anyway. Who says? Show me. <sighs> Never mind. Naomi sulkily walked out when she ran straight into Scarlet. What on earth happened? You wouldn't understand. This time, Scarlet got a better grip of the job and became more confident. Then her followers grew quickly when she had a few viral videos. Those numbers translate to more high-profile promo campaigns and countless PR packages from brands. Most of her free PR stuff went to Naomi, though. Scarlet got recognized and asked for photos more often whenever she went out, and she gradually and strangely loved it. Athena seemed to be satisfied and not giving her a hard time anymore, and even flashed the first smile. Most importantly, there's more money to go towards their dad's treatment. Thanks, my darlings. The doctors could proceed with every necessary procedure, so I'll be discharged any day now. By the way, does your mother treat you well? She better. Soon you won't need to bend over backwards anymore. When dad gets better, this will all be over? Why do I suddenly feel kinda empty? Are you not happy to see dad get better? What? No! Of course I'm happy for him! Right then, Naomi saw something that could change everything. What's that? Nothing. Scarlet's on cloud nine to see all those times of intensive training, diet, and exercise finally bear fruits. Today, Athena even called her to her office. Maybe she wants to discuss the next trip, or plan to move to LA. I want to terminate our contract, effective immediately. What? What? You'll be compensated for this untimely breach of contract, which would be enough to cover everything, and- Hold on, why? You're no fit. Am I not getting more popular? What do you mean? You won't last. But it can still be a source of income. Why cut it completely? More profit for you too, right? Isn't that your sole target in doing this? Or are you afraid that I'll come back to bat you once I've made it? Watch your tongue. Regardless, we won't be working together. That's final. Tell me, are you scared people will figure out that I'm your daughter? Right, you never even came to see my frail bedridden father. I never needed a mother like you anyway. Then a smack landed on Scarlet's face. She held her left cheek, eyes wide open, and glared at the person standing in front of her with great fury. I arrived home in really good spirits after an exciting training session, and my mood took an instant nosedive to see my devious cousin Caitlin holding my diary. Oh wow, so your crush is Leo, the swimming club captain, huh? Give me it back. I wonder if the whole school knows yet. Don't worry, your devoted cousin is here to help. Thanks a lot, but I'll do it myself. Stop poking your big nose in my business. Hey, um, first, your nose is much bigger than mine. And second, about Leo, Leo, whatever. He'll be mine soon. Tit for tat, payback for stealing my boyfriend. How ridiculous and so not true. She should blame herself for having terrible taste in men instead. No thanks. I didn't want a player like him either. Hi, I'm Megan, the leader of the school scout club. I'm friendly, fun, and love going on adventures, just like my explorer dad. So of course, girls like Caitlin don't scare me. From day one of my dear cousin moving in with us, it was clear we were never going to get on. I love to run around the garden and learn interesting survival tricks with my dad, while Caitlin can't even stand a speck of dirt. Oh my god! Billions of germs are attacking me! Get me sanitizer! No! And it didn't help at all that Caitlin's jerk of a boyfriend asked me out right after breaking up with her. Despite my clear disinterest in him, she blamed me. That's when we were officially like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and the prank wars began. She drew on my face in permanent marker while I slept stuck gum in my hair, and once she even tried to shave my eyebrows. But who am I, huh? I can beat her with only one move. 
But now, the stakes have been raised. She's going after Leo. So I need to confess my feelings to him ASAP before Caitlin butts in and ruins it. The perfect opportunity would be the upcoming school field trip for top students, which Caitlin definitely can't join. And there'll be plenty of chances for me to impress Leo. But there's one slight problem. It's by a river. OMG, thinking of it made me want to pee my pants already. Ahem. <clears throat> I have thalassophobia, which is an intense fear of large bodies of water. Of course, I keep this a secret because no one will take me seriously as a scout leader if they find out about this. However, this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal, and no way can I just sit at home while Caitlin digs her claws into Leo. So, I signed up for the trip and set up a master plan for it. Baby steps. I mean, literally. I signed up for swimming in a kid-friendly pool. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, but why are my legs trembling like this? Ha <laughs> ha It's not like I've morphed into a jellyfish or something. Look, the pool is turning into the scary ocean ready to swallow me! Help! Suddenly, a boy with a floaty bumped into me. I fell on my butt and my leg touched the water. Something grabbed me. Loch Ness Monster! It's eating me alive! Just then, a kid popped up and started laughing at me. It's okay, Megan. Happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Ah, this is much better. But then I felt splashes everywhere. I tried to avoid them but ended up toppling over and fell into the water. Panicking, I spluttered and flailed about. I couldn't care any less about everyone looking at me weirdly anymore and just screamed for dear life. Suddenly, strong arms pulled me out of the water. Then that guy carried me, and my face pressed right against his chest. Holy moly, it felt harder than a rock. You all right? Oh, my Superman. I'll be your Lois Lane. Ew, snot is streaming down your face. Disgusting. Gosh, this is so embarrassing. I got dressed at the speed of light and ran out of there. Um, hang on. Something isn't right. Hey, missing something? Jesus! This jerk still tried to embarrass me at the last minute? The only good guy in this world is my Leo! As if it's still not enough to call it a day, I came home to see Caitlin watching a scary movie about a giant shark. Sup? Scared of me already? It's not too late to cling onto my leg and beg! <laughs> Who's scared? This stupid show. It's obviously all CGI. There's no shark in the world that could be that big. <laughs> and, um, they're labeled as dangerous, indiscriminate killers that eat anything in sight. But in fact, sharks are most often the victims. Whew. My acting was not so bad, was it? Finally, the field trip participants list was published. Of course, my name was on it. And Leo, too. But wait, why is Caitlin here? She's always wrapped up with boys instead of studying. And doesn't even remember the multiplication table. What? Can't accept the fact that I'm a genius too? FYI, I am super quick at math. Really? So what is 356 plus 445? Easy, 234. Huh? That's not even close. But it was quick. See you on the trip. I'll be watching you, sis. The day finally came and our tour guide is Mike, the best scout in the state. But hold on, why does this guy look familiar? Oh no, that's the guy who saved me at the pool. Scared that he'll expose me, I didn't know what to do but to give him the stupidest smile. To my surprise, he seemed not to remember me at all. Then he asked me to demonstrate the first activity with him, vertical neck climbing. It's time for me to shine. Eyes on me, Leo. Gosh, this guy climbed like a monkey. But don't expect me to accept a loss. I was enjoying the victory when Caitlin approached me. Everyone knows that muscle power is only to make up for a tiny brain. Yeah, great shout, Megan. Use all your energy up in one go just so you can show off. Are they cut from the same cloth? Never mind. Hmm, Leo's looking at me. His eyes are so dreamy. That was even more powerful than ten cans of monster drinks. Nature hunt, monkey bridge, Tarzan rope, all these challenges didn't make me break into a sweat. And Leo even came to praise me. That's incredible, Megan. How can you do that? Oh, Leo, I only had an apple for breakfast, so now I'm having hypoglycemia or something. I'm so dizzy. OMG, my dear cousin should really get an Oscar nomination for her fake act. I gave my sweetest smile and helped her. Just so when Leo wasn't looking, I tripped her up and she fell face first into a muddy puddle. Leo tried to wipe it off, but ended up turning her into a monkey. Then Mike walked past and said, Wow, this layer of makeup is a big improvement. His caddish tongue seemed not to leave anyone alone. In the afternoon, I took my free time to wander around and saw a pretty bird. Hmm, 
I wonder what it is. That's a red-capped mannequin. Very popular in Central American forests. Wow, good knowledge. Thanks for telling me without being asked. They have a signature dance to impress their mates. Any idea? A moonwalk that rivals Michael Jackson's. <laughs> Wait, what? Why did I laugh so hard? He might be funny, but he's still a jerk. The last activity of the day was using rocks to make fire, and I was paired with... Leo. Thank you, universe. I squidged up close to him and offered him a mint. He happily took it, but then suddenly turned red and started choking. I leaped into action and hit him hard on his back, making the mint fly out. Leo immediately took my hand. My guardian angel, where have you been all my life? Anyway, would you like to join me for a walk later? I have something to tell you. Yes! Ooh, I mean, sure. Where do you want to go? The riverbank. Romantic, right? <laughs> R river? I'll die there. But so what? This is my chance. If I die, I'll die under the title of Leo's girlfriend. Totally worth it. I arrived to see Leo already waiting. His skin was glistening beneath the setting sunlight. Hmm, he was like my very own Edward Cullen, but it didn't make me any less scared. Oh, you're here. You look pale. Are you sick? Oh, no. No, I'm fine. Great. Let's get on the boat to enjoy the view. I closed my eyes tightly and squeezed Leo's hand. Then Leo kept talking, but I couldn't hear anything until... Megan, I've admired you for so long. Will you be my girlfriend? I turned into the ripest tomato, but managed to blurt out, I I'd love to. Gotcha! Gosh, why is Caitlin here? I was still in shock when Leo jumped out of the boat and... High-fived Caitlin? Then they kissed? Surprise! Surprise! Now you know how it feels to have your dream guy stolen away. No, no, please, I, I can't stand it. The water is scaring me. Just enjoy the view, Megan. Where's that fierce girl gone? Your mom told me that you have thalassophobia, but I didn't expect it to be so real. Don't worry, I'll show this to the whole school so they'll come rescue you. Good luck, cousin. Leo and Caitlin walked off holding hands. I stayed as still as I could in the unsteady boat. The world was spinning around me, but I couldn't do anything but cry. Time went by like a decade had passed. Then I felt a pat on my shoulder. Mike stretched out his hand, then swooped me up in his arms and carried me to the lawn nearby. But how did you find me? I saw the video Caitlin just posted, then immediately went to look for you along the riverbank. Is that so? How embarrassing. He kept silent for a while, then said, You might not know this, but I used to be freaked out by heights. My acrophobia is better now, but still. No way! You nailed the climbing challenge earlier. If you want to overcome your fear, then you have to find a way to face it. Be courageous. Don't let it become a weakness for others to laugh at. Then he gave me the sweetest smile. And right at that moment, he looked kind of different to me. More attractive. That night, I shut myself away in my tent while the others gathered around the bonfire. I wasn't ready to face anyone just yet, and my mind was too restless to sleep. The next morning came the boat race. When I arrived, all judging eyes were on me. I was nervous, but soon plucked up my courage and spoke out. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan, and I have thalassophobia. So, I can't complete this challenge. I'm embarrassed. Not about my phobia, but about letting myself live in fear of it. I love being a scout leader with all my heart, so I'll try to beat this. Fear is not your enemy, it is your motivation. Then I walked off to cheering and clapping. Back at the tent, I saw Mike waiting for me. That's the spirit. You're really brave and have the qualities of a true adventurer. Even when you're not in the game, you've already won the special prize in my heart. Everything went smoothly after the field trip. Even Caitlin stopped bothering me. She must be busy being lovey-dovey with her new love. Until one day, I saw her arrive home sobbing. What happened? That jerk Leo, he cheated on me with two, no, three girls at the same time. Excuse me? Why is my life so miserable? I know I can never outsmart you or be as brave, as confident as you, but do I not deserve at least one nice thing? I didn't know Caitlin had this self-deprecating side. Suddenly, I felt sorry for her. She is my cousin after all. Don't cry. I'll help you teach him a lesson. Really? Megan, I'm sorry for letting my jealousy turn me into a monster. Are we good? The next day at school, we stepped into the hallway and heard a horrified scream. 
It was Leo with his locker full of cockroaches. He freaked out so much that his friend had to catch him before he fell over. Oh, Leo, I am just warming up. I gathered my classmates and showed them the extra special gift I had prepared for him. Hello, everyone. This time on Name a Cockroach After Your Ex, we have here a gentleman named Leo Whittemore. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone! Everyone burst out laughing and Leo literally fainted. And now he's known as Leo the Roach. Actually, this was all Mike's idea. So we can both retaliate against Leo and donate to the Cry Me a Cockroach Wildlife Fund. And back to me. To make things right, I decided to go back to where I started. I realized nothing is impossible when you believe in yourself and when you have a perfect companion to give you the gentle nudge you need. I was in this romantic dinner date with the love of my life, knowing too well that one day I'd be gone. But I couldn't help but falling for him. I'm in love with you, and I know that love is just a shout into the void, and that we're all doomed, and that there will come a day the sun will swallow the only earth we'll ever have. And I am in love with you. Cut. Excellent, Eleanor. Well, that was the usual in the life of an actress. Oh, hey, didn't catch you there. I'm Eleanor, from L.A. My life as a kid was a bit different from others. While they were surrounded by dolls and toys, I was wrapped up in the limelight. Being a superstar seemed fun back then, but the glitz and glamour of showbiz gradually wore me out. My momager never let me take a break between gigs, so there's no time to hang with people my age. You know, I missed out on doing normal things like having sleepovers and going to birthday parties. And before I knew it, I was already swarmed with work and work. Sweetheart, I've got you another script. Take a look. Whatever, Mom. FYI, Jeremiah is also on the show. Seriously? Mom, that heartless jerk cheated on me. No way am I working with him. Eleanor, be professional. I've already signed the contract. Besides, Mommy's Bentley collection is missing this shiny golden one. I don't give a damn about your stupid car. Stop treating me like a GoFundMe for your lavish lifestyle. Mom can be insufferable sometimes. She dictated everything. But why bother now? No showbiz, no mom's orders. I can do whatever I want. Bye-bye salad and hello chocolate cake. But suddenly, a dark figure bolted towards me and snatched my bag. I lost my balance, banged my head on a fire hydrant, and then everything went black. Gosh, my head was spinning. I opened my eyes to see a cute guy leaning over me. Hey, are you alright? Am I dreaming? Because this view sure is dreamy. <laughs> no, you're not. You're at the orphanage. I found you unconscious on the ground last night, so I brought you here. Excuse me? An orphanage? I can't be in a place like this. But wait, my phone and wallet? Darn it. That thief stole my bag along with everything. Guess I needed to delay my independent life plan just a little bit. I better call mom. Hey, got a phone I can borrow? Suddenly, the TV broadcast a missing report. The young actress Eleanor Mitchell has been reported missing. Speculation is that this is a publicity stunt to promote her latest movie. However, her manager claims this is not true and urges anyone with information to come forward. Huh, that chick will soon reappear when she's hungry. What? I could be lying dead in a lay-by for all they knew and they were still mocking me? I was so done with this. Goodbye, showbiz. I was leaving that fickle world behind for real. So, I asked the orphanage's manager if I could stay here and help out. Just then, a group of kids noisily ran towards me and printed their hands on my shirt. No! My custom Chanel! Sis, come play with us! Uh, do I look like a nanny to you? Go wash your hands, dirty children. Shoo! Shoo! Ahem, <clears throat> you're supposed to go play with them? Ah, I forgot about that. I steered away to find another group of kids splashing mud everywhere. Ugh! Are they training a bunch of farmers or something? The next morning, this strange screeching noise startled me. It's only 6 a.m. I sluggishly dragged my feet out of the room. People immediately threw me judging looks. I guess my first day at work started off on the wrong foot. I barely had time to sip my coffee before they made me do the washing by hand. This wasn't the dark ages. Hadn't they ever heard of a washing machine? One of the staff got annoyed with me and shooed me away. Alrighty, I'd go help in the kitchen. Peel half of these. Easy peasy. Just give me a few minutes. Voila! I'm good, right? But somehow, they still got mad at me. 
No other choices. I headed to the children's, but this place is pure chaos. I sure wish I had my earplugs. Suddenly, I felt someone grabbing my leg. I looked down to see the cutest pair of puppy eyes. Sis, can I have a bite of that? Aw, how could I say no to that? But as soon as I gave her the cake, her face changed into a devilish grin. The little girl grabbed a big chunk with her bare hand, then smashed it into another kid's face, and the cake fight began. Caleb opened his mouth to say something, and a massive piece of cake flew into it. Oh my god, Caleb, are you alright? I, I didn't know they were gonna mess with the cake. You did this? Oh, you're so dead to me. He grabbed the cake and started chasing me across the room. What? This was so unprofession- Right, that's it. Watch out, Caleb. Okay, so the manager wasn't very happy with us, but honestly, it was the most fun I'd ever had. Besides, after the cake fight, the kids seemed to like me. Whenever they saw me, they clung to my legs and begged me to play with them. One day I was in the garden attending to the flowers when this little girl ran over to me in tears. Oh, Pumpkin, what's wrong? Bella was adopted a few days ago, but they just brought her back. Poor kid. All I could do was pull her into a warm embrace and pat her back. Do you know what it is these kids crave the most in the world? Not new toys or expensive clothes. They just want love. Love? I never thought something so simple could seem so unreachable to these kids. Well then, this Eleanor will make sure they'll be showered in love from now on. There's still some troubles, but luckily, I had Caleb on hand to help. Then one night, I was sitting outside looking at the skyline when Caleb came over. He leaned across me and pulled something off my cheek. Oops, the kids must have stuck it while I was asleep. <laughs> That's on you for giving them a sticker book. <laughs> um, Eleanor, I, um, I'm glad you're here. I, I really like you and I'm falling in love with you. Will you be my girlfriend? Wow, I wasn't expecting that. But Caleb was a great guy, so being with him made sense, right? And the following days were fantastic. We found out lots about each other. Oh, there's something you might be surprised about me. I used to be an actress. Oh, I didn't expect that. I just think showbiz is kind of toxic. I'm sorry you feel that way. But believe me, I have no interest in it anymore. Good, because it's all a load of pretentious jerks who think they're so much better than everyone else. Hmm, that's harsh, I guess. But he's right, though. Anyway, I've already found fairy tale love right here. But to be honest, I did miss the elaborate sets, the stunning costumes, the dazzling studio lights, and the feeling of morphing into a different character. So sometimes I played out Disney princess roles for the kids. But one time, Caleb stormed in on us. Look at you. You've fallen back into your old ways. Come on, kids. You have better things to do than this. My heart thumped in sadness. Acting was a part of who I was, but seems like he'd never understand that. And I don't want to upset him either. So I guess I had to put aside my passion and just focus on my new life here. One day while skipping towards the playground, I slipped on a banana peel and was about to fall when a strong arm caught my back and helped me to stand up. Surely he did have a strong build and a gentleman manner. But who is this guy? I thanked him, but he just stared at me. You look just like Eleanor Mitchell. Well, I am her. Oh, you left showbiz for real? I thought it was just a media trick. Oof, what was his deal? Was he a reporter coming to dig up dirt? Oh, sorry, just kidding. But are you serious about quitting acting? You've got talent. All you need is a good script to sink your teeth into, instead of those terrible ones you've been given. Huh? Was that considered a compliment? Turns out, he's Frederick, a young screenwriter who came to the orphanage for inspiration and to help out. He even set up a mini theater for the kids to have their first cinematic experience. As you can see, anything's possible in movies. Even our most magical dreams can come true. I suddenly remembered why cinema had captivated me in the first place. It opened the audience to multiple perspectives and worlds. This is the cinema I love and dream of being a part of. And maybe that's why I'm naturally drawn to Fred. He might seem a little playful, but when it came to movies, he turned into another person. I cannot deny that my flame for acting was rekindled by his genuine sharings. I mean, everybody loves Fred. Look. Well, maybe not everyone. Okay, kids, but remember, studying is priority so that you can have a better life. Acting and script writing is just a pipe dream. It's not real. Yes, studying is important, but arts are what we live for, what nurtures us from within. Art has no value. Investing money in arts is like throwing it out the window. There are people who barely have anything to eat. Why not use that money to help them instead? Gosh, these man-children. They looked ready to start a fight, so I had to step up and stop them. 
After that day, Caleb and Fred were constantly giving each other dirty looks. I tried to calm Caleb down, but he got mad at me for no reason. Things only got worse between them, and I felt awkward with Fred. Just let him be. I don't want his problems to get in between our friendship. By the way, I have something for you. Then he showed me his new script and asked me for advice. And guess what? The script was actually based on my life in the orphanage. He'd been inspired by my journey here. It was such a beautiful script, and I felt seen and understood, though we just met not long ago. Then out of nowhere, Caleb angrily bolted towards us. What the heck are you doing? He tried to drag me away, but Fred stopped him. Dude, can't you see you're hurting her? Not your business. Get your dumb writing hands off of her. Stop, Caleb, you're being rude. I'm not done with you, Eleanor. You went behind my back to swoon for this brat and his dumb art. I thought you'd be different, but you're just like them. Once a spoiled actress, always a spoiled actress, huh? So this is how little you think of me? Caleb, listen, acting is what I live for. I even tried to hold it back just to please you. And look where it got me. I'm done hiding my true passion. Caleb, we're over. Caleb looked down and didn't say a word. And after that, he packed his things and left the orphanage. It's true Caleb had opened up something in me. But if being with him meant I had to lose myself, then I'd gotta let him go. The orphanage without him was not the same. Luckily, I had Fred to cheer me up. He asked me to play the lead in his upcoming film project, and with the script based on my journey here, I agreed. It felt good knowing I could finally go back to acting, even if I was sort of playing myself. Then one day, I found a baby left in front of the orphanage. Then I quickly carried him inside. Poor Hector. I'll take good care of you. Mama. That's right. Your mama's here. Dada. I'm your dada now? Together we'll be a happy family, right, Mama? Oh boy, it made my stomach do cartwheels. But was it okay to feel this way after everything happened? We started filming in the orphanage soon, and the kids were a big help. It felt quite strange after a long break. But the thing that got me nervous about was the audience's reaction to the movie. Turns out, I was worried for nothing, as the feedback was actually amazing. Though that joy didn't last long, as a few days after, the image of me holding Hector hit the internet with the headline, Actress Turned Teenage Mum. Through their words, I appeared as this reckless girl who got pregnant and ran away from showbiz to give birth. That got netizens turned 180 and throw shade at me. What a load of nonsense. Right at that moment, I got a text from Caleb. Is this your rotten showbiz? So it's him who leaked that picture to the press. How could he? I've got to sort this out. Today's the day. It's time to shed light on everything. Hi everyone, today I have an announcement to make. It's true, I have a baby now, and the father of my child is Jeremiah Williamson, my ex. Everyone gasped in shock. Just then, a man in black stood up and revealed himself. Ha! The prey fell for the trap. You, you liar! Everyone stop listening to her lies! Oh yeah? Then Jeremiah, why exactly are you here? He was completely speechless. That's what I thought. Now, Joshua, Jeremiah's private detective, may you please stand up. Among the crowd, both Caleb and Fred forced the detective up to his feet. Tell them what you know. The deal was Jeremiah felt humiliated as I'd refused to work with him, so he decided to hire this Joshua guy to dig dirt on me. That's how he got my picture with the baby. Luckily, Caleb caught the detective sneaking around the orphanage, and together, we set up the trap to lure Jeremiah in. Jeremiah still insisted he had no idea who this Joshua guy is until I showed the evidence of the transactions between him and his detective on the big screen. Any last words? Justice served. Let's see how he handles this scandal. Right at that moment, I spotted a familiar face in the crowd. Mom, I, I hadn't seen her for such a long time. Darling, I'm so sorry. I realize now how terribly wrong I've been. I thought I was helping, but turns out I only smothered you. But you're ready to make your own choices. Please forgive me, and don't leave me again. I'm sorry too, Mom, for leaving like that. I didn't mean to worry you. I threw my arms around her, tears welling up in my eyes. My time in the orphanage has taught me a big lesson. Family isn't always perfect, but they're the most precious thing in the world. Later, I stepped outside to see Caleb waiting there. What a mess. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. Don't mention it. Actually, I should apologize to you first. That day I couldn't control my words because I was jealous. I'm sorry. And one more thing. I still have feelings for you, so can we... I know what you're about to say, but I've come to realize that we're not right for each other. I think I'm in love with someone else. Thank you for being kind to me. I could see the disappointment on his face, but then he gave me an understanding smile. Out of nowhere, the kids jumped out at me and insisted I go to see their paintings. They took me back to the orphanage and each held their own drawing. Hi, Eleanor. 
You're the most special girl I've ever met. Will you be my girlfriend? Fred appeared in front of me and held out a rose. So, Eleanor, what do you say? Oh, wow. What do you think, kids? That answers then? Yes. Yes, I will. I was walking down the hallway to see the infamous dude standing there, doing his old trick to pick on some shy student. Get that filthy hand off him now! Then I grabbed him and threw him away like a piece of paper. Ah, that's better. Konnichiwa, I'm Yukiko from Japan, the daughter of Fuji, a famous martial arts master and the principal of a karate school. As his only child, it's up to me to evolve my warrior spirit and protect the weak from any baka. And this shy girl is Chiharu, the one I saved from a fight with the rival school gang. And ever since then, we became besties. Well, that's also how I earned the nickname Big Boss. I don't really care about it, but it does have some perks. I always had the best reserved seat next to the window, a desk drawer full of snacks, and on top of that, the kid was competing every day to do my homework. However, it also caused me some complications. I seem to have caught the eye of Jun, that rival school's gang leader. He bought me flowers and sent me these cheesy cupcakes every day, but I only gave him a no. Hey, he comes again. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you on my arm, girl. You keep go, never be alone. Tomato, tomato, throwing tomatoes. Even when the guard came carrying him away, he was still shouting. You keep go, die, scooter! Gosh, he's such a bug. Later, I came into the classroom and found everyone was going cuckoo over something. How noisy. That's the new student. He's just so handsome. As if you could tell someone's handsome from the back. But when he turned around, my eyes almost bulged from their sockets. It's Akira. Back when we were little, I adored Akira from the moment I first saw him. To me, he was even cuter than my favorite Mochi Shiba plushie. So I followed him everywhere and gave him all the candies I had. But he didn't like it that much. Why did you give her my candies? I like Akira. If you take him from me, I'll punch you. Hey, martial arts is not about fighting nonsense. You fierce kid, I hate you! After a while, Akira's family moved away and I'd completely lost contact with him. And now, he's back. Our eyes met, but he looked so cold and turned away. He didn't recognize me? Fine. It was so embarrassing facing him again anyway, so I decided to avoid him like the plague since then. And just like that, with his excellent academic ability, Akira soon fell into place as the top student, while I'm a bit different. I may have been a black belt in the karate, but exams were definitely not my thing. Congratulations, you've excelled at coming last again. So, Yukiko, I've appointed another student to tutor you. Please don't say his name, please don't say his name, please, please, please. Akira, I nearly died on the spot. Can anybody throw me to Mars, please? Man, it's super awkward. I kept looking at the ground when he blurted out, Hi, Yukiko. Long time no see. So, he does remember me? During the lesson, I couldn't focus, and my body was heating up. I kept my mouth shut while he was immersed in his lecture. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to ask. I plucked up my courage and said, Why didn't you like me when we were kids? You're still acting like before. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you, but your head's stuck in the clouds. Focus. He didn't say he hated me, did he? My heart fluttered again. Guess I'd have to try harder to get his attention then. But things didn't exactly go as planned. During the lessons with Akira, my phone rang constantly with calls and messages. Seemed like my goons were in trouble and they needed my help. I tried my best to ignore it, but finally gave in. I've got something to do. I'll be right back. Hey, those morons. They're always messing around, then leave it to me. Problem solved. Only that, lucky for you, I got there in time. In time to cause more trouble? I'd have eaten them for breakfast without you. Back at school, I saw Akira standing at the gate with a clearly not happy face. Akira, it's not like what you think. I- You find it hard to study, but fighting seems to come naturally to you, huh? Who the freak are you? How dare you talk to my girl like that? Akira, I fight to help people. It's not nonsense. Help? I suppose brainless people only know how to talk with their fists. June immediately lunged at Akira, raising his fists at him. I had to hold him back right away and told him to go. The silence went on for some minutes, but when he was about to leave, I couldn't stand it anymore. Just because I liked you then, you think you have the right to look down on me? What? Hear this. I do like you, but it doesn't mean I will like you forever. I don't care, but I'm sorry if the truth I spoke made you feel that I looked down on you. And you know what? If you can't take my tutoring seriously, then we're done. 
Fine, go! See if I care. I, the big boss myself, have my own limits and cannot be chasing him all the time. But I couldn't deny that a pit was dropping to the bottom of my stomach. I just want to go home and curl up under cover. Then I arrived at my family's karate academy to see it was all sealed off. And my dad was sitting on the doorstep holding a letter. Dad? What happened? Yukiko, I'm bankrupt. I had no choice but to sell the academy to moneylenders. I've lost everything. No! This academy is our family legacy. My dad's life's work. We couldn't lose it. So I followed the address on the letter, but there I met an unexpected person. June! Turns out, his dad is my dad's creditor. All or nothing, I decided to get straight to the point to him. What do my family have to do to get our martial arts school back? June came over and whispered something in his ear. Then he pondered a while and said, My son kept goofing around. Change him and the martial arts school is back to yours. But how? I want you to get engaged to my son. Are you serious? You think I'm a joke? Then I immediately stood up and left. That was insane. Hey, why are you behaving like that? You're still asking why? It's down to that dude, isn't it? He's just some preppy know-it-all who doesn't even like you. You, you know nothing. He also likes me, I think. Is that so? Then prove it. Make Akira fall in love with you within two weeks, and I'll convince my father to extend the deadline by three months. Fail, and we get engaged. I'm the one who is always by your side. No way I agree with your stupid deal. Go ahead, refuse. The martial arts school will be permanently closed tomorrow. Wait, I, I, okay, I'm in. Lucky enough, I had Chiharu, the love guru, to help me cook up the perfect Get Akira scheme. Though she'd been single, like, forever. <laughs> Firstly, I told my gang that Akira'd soon to be my BF, and also their boss, so he deserved a special treat. Wherever he went, other students bowed 90 degrees to greet him. They tended to his every need, carried his bag, and were always at his service. But he seemed not so comfortable about this. Ask your goons to stop their nonsense. Okay, as long as you agree to my conditions. What? Tutor me again. Oh, and have lunch together. And walk to and from school? I, I can't. Okay then, guys. Fine. Secondly, you needed to find out what Akira like, but he'll refuse to answer my questions for sure. My fake council survey will answer that. Then she handed out the paper to the whole class. My goofy Chiharu did get it done this time. Okay, according to a philosopher, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Akira's most favorite food is beef, so I rummaged through all the local supermarkets to find A5 Wagyu beef and prepared this perfect meal for him. Akira, eat this. Oh, thank you, Cream Puff. How come you know I like beef? How did you get in here? I know you miss me, so I come to visit. Before I could say anything, Akira shook his head and walked off. Okay, the first step is always the hardest. Next, seeing that Akira liked horror movies, I lied to him that Chiharu stood me up, so I had an extra ticket. It's insidious. How could he refuse? But as soon as we sat down, a familiar face caught my attention. June? Stop messing with me, you child! Eh? I'm a horror fan, just like you. We're sure a match made in heaven. I tried to ignore him and focus on my plan. This was the third time I watched this, so I knew exactly when there'd be a jump scare. It's time. I pasted a whining look on my face and was about to lean on Akira when June suddenly screamed his lungs out and jumped at me. It was not until he fell asleep that we had a bit of privacy. But from then till we left, Akira didn't speak a word and even asked to leave early. That's not okay. If things kept going this way, the whole plan would definitely fail. And it means I'd have to get engaged to June. No! The next day, I wasn't in the mood for dealing with my friends, so I lingered back in the classroom and read through Akira's notes. Oh, what's this? So, he does care about me. I can see one ray of hope. Akira, I want to improve my studies. Help me? Oh, okay. I was waiting outside for Akira to get us some bubble teas before we started, when suddenly this thief darted out and snatched this old lady's bag. I dove in there to help, but he knocked me to the ground and ran away. Here you go. You're already fighting again? Don't you have anything better to do? I'm not fi- Forget it anyway. This brave young lady helped me. W what? Say no more. I'm a bad person no matter what. Then I stormed off without looking back. 
I was so stupid to catch feels with that insensitive one. Then my knee suddenly collapsed. Right then, a hand reached out and gently wrapped a bandage around my knee. Leave me alone. Get on my back. Shut up. Come on. I couldn't help but smile through my frown, and my heart did a cartwheel. I clambered onto his back and looped my arms around his neck. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you- It's okay. Are you dumb? An injured leg is not enough? It's nothing. And- you don't have to carry me like this. Am I heavy? What? <laughs> if I say yes, will you jump off? No way. After that day, Akira changed towards me. He joined me for lunch and even gave me a cute cupcake and agreed to go to Cat Cafe with me, even though he's allergic. And the classes went so smoothly. He was sweet like a lollipop and answered to all my silly questions. One time, I even accidentally saw him putting a lot of bandages in my locker. Aww. Winning the bet didn't seem so impossible then, but suddenly a girl approached him. It was Amaya, the school's popular girl. They chewed the fat. Then she leaned closer and whispered something to him. His face suddenly turned cold. Then he walked away. I was about to go after him when my phone beeped. Can't tutor you today. I have a play audition. So, turns out Akira and Amaya were both in this play. Fine. If Akira's Romeo, then I must be Juliet. I made it to the final round with my big boss energy, which meant I got to act out a scene with Akira to see who got the female lead between me and Amaya. Oh dear, look at them, being all clingy for what? That snake was all over my poor Akira like a rash. Ugh, if Chiharu hadn't constantly held me back, I'd have jumped there and given her a piece of my mind. And now it's time for me to shine. But why is Akira's face darkened? It's okay, maybe he's trying to be professional? My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love... My love, as adoring as... as a puppy dog's... nose. Um, yes, so I may have forgotten the words, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> he may pick me for my quick thinking, and... I choose Amaya, miss. Hey, why did you pick her? You shouldn't ask me. Ask yourself instead. Then he left with Amaya without glancing at me. But today is the end of the two-week deadline. I thought you'd have some feelings for me, too. It was pouring rain. I trudged home. All collapsed, tears and rain falling down all over my face. It was all over. The bed I play, the boy I love. I should have known better that it was me onto a loser right from the outset. Through my teary eyes, I saw June running towards me. Yukiko, what's wrong? Tell me. I, I lost. What? The bet. Between us. I lost it. I was wrong about everything. Who cares about the bet? You might get a cold, you know. Get inside. But why you're here? I don't care if you think it's too late. I'm telling you anyway. I know that I'm not perfect like him. I do say the wrong thing. I forget all the time, but I... I can protect and will never hurt you. So will you... marry me? My head was spinning, and in a moment of weakness, I said yes. At least I can save my dad's school and be with the right person who truly cares about me, instead of chasing some jerk who thought so low of me. I confided in Chiharu and my family about this, but kept it a secret from everyone else. <sighs> my father didn't approve it at first, but seeing my determination, he reluctantly agreed. It was our fitting day. I was with June discussing our wedding, but he seemed distracted and kept checking his phone. Then he said he had to take a call and hurried out. Sensing something was up, I followed him. Huh? Why is he talking to Amaya? You have to thank me for your new fiancé. I told Akira about your bet. Um, excellent job, as promised. It's not about the money. It's about making Akira mine. I don't get why both you and my beautiful Yukiko like that dude so much. Anyway, Yukiko's waiting for me. Gotta go. I couldn't believe what was in front of me. What the heck are you doing here? So it's you who made up everything the whole time? No, Yukiko. Let me explain. I trusted you, June. But look what you've done. You know what? You win. Do your worst. I don't care anymore. Then I ran home as fast as I could. Why do boys all fool me around like that? Right when I felt more disheartened than ever... I met the one that I didn't want to see the most. What was Akira doing here? Yukiko, let's talk. We have nothing to talk about. Chiharu told me what you're doing. You can't marry June. You liked me, so you mustn't fall for another one that easily. What? So you're the commander of my feelings now? Aren't you with Amaya? I'm not, and I never did. Listen, I was so angry to find out I was just part of your bet with June, so I ignored you. But then Chiharu told me why you did it and made me understand. So what? Anyway, you never liked me. I'm not gentle and too fierce, as you said before. Don't try to pity me. I don't. It's that I do like you. At first, I thought you were the type of person who'd use violence to solve any problem. But the more I got to know you, the more I learned about your pure heart. I shouldn't have judged you so quickly. I'm sorry. 
What just happened? I might be dreaming, but no, Akira, my seven-year crush, just confessed his love with me. So, Akira and I got together. June was furious about it, but he kept his word, and now my dad has three months to pay off his debt. I'm helping him out by teaching karate classes to earn money, something I really enjoy. Everything was great, too great, until... Yukiko, I gotta tell you something. I... I have to go abroad to study. I'll leave. Tomorrow. What? I don't understand. Why so sudden? I prepared for it months ago, but I couldn't tell you. I didn't want to make you sad. Will you... wait for me? Of course not. I may get bored and start liking another by that time. It's time. I stood still watching the train pass by, until I noticed Akira's melancholy smile. I liked you seven years ago, and now I still do. So of course I can wait for you. Come back soon, Akira. I was sound asleep when loud bangings jolted me awake. The cops busted in and immediately pinned me down. What are you doing? Let me go! Get away from me! Do you even know who I am? Rebecca Darlington, you're under arrest for stealing Mr. Woodley Jones's heirloom necklace. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Stealing? What? No, I didn't do it. Let me go! Man, I got into big trouble that time. Oh, hey guys, I'm Rebecca. Believe it or not, it's actually my bizarre life story here. Before we start, please like and subscribe. My dad passed away when I was only five, so my mom had to step up and take over the entire family business on her own. And she was the biggest perfectionist on the planet, not just in business, but in the family too. Seriously, it's her way or no way. I hated this and always tried to rebel. However, mom always found a way to ruin my fun and forced me to study business instead. Ugh, <sighs> boring. But lucky me, my brother, Kevin, always got my back. One morning over breakfast, mom decided to drop a bombshell on me. Rebecca, I've arranged you a date with Brian, the Woodley Jones's son. You are to go there for dinner and be on your best behavior. They are very affluent. They own half of the city. No chance. I'm not some pawn in your bid to gain business deals. If you ignore my orders, I'll transfer you to a boarding school all the way to Australia. You wouldn't. Don't test me, young lady. Perhaps you could arrange this date for another time when Rebecca has a time to digest it? If I wanted your input, I would have asked for it. He's my brother, and he has a say in this. Your adopted brother. It's about time he knows his place. Kevin looked so hurt, but still put a smile on for me. He's such an angel, just like his mom, Rosalie. Rosalie used to work here as a maid, and Kevin would often come play with me. But then she suddenly passed away, leaving Kevin all alone in this world. So mom adopted him out of pity. To me, Kevin's always been a family, and I will not let mom treat him like that. How about I let her have a taste of her own medicine? So I took mom's magic money card and went on a huge shopping splurge. Mom wouldn't be mad if her card missed a few zeros, right? Now let's get ready for the date. Ta-da! I look crazy, right? Take that, mom. No way will this Brian guy want a second date. Kevin kindly offered to drive me to my date. He reassured me it would be okay, then passed me a box of chocolates to give to Brian. Ugh, oh, Kevin. It was gone 9 p.m. when I strolled into the grand entrance hall of the Woodley Joneses mansion. Brian's jaw dropped to the floor as soon as he saw my crazy look. Oh, but I didn't stop there. I first asked all the servers to leave us alone, then made him nauseous with my table manners and wowed him with my big appetite. I even sneaked bites of the chocolates meant for him and playfully fed him some. After dinner, I asked him to give me a tour of the mansion. But by the time we reached the jewelry room, my head was spinning. Then everything went blurry and I blacked out. The next morning, I was already back at my house without any memories of how I got back. Then these cops came in and arrested me. Now I'm in this interrogation room being accused of stealing the Woodley Jones necklace. Apparently, it was quite pricey and had been handed down through 12 generations. You were at the scene of the crime. If you want to prove your innocence, then I suggest you start telling me what happened. Like I said, I went there for dinner, then fainted, and somehow woke up in my bed with cops everywhere. Stop lying. Brian was the one who was drugged, during which time you cut off the power so you wouldn't be caught on CCTV, then stole the necklace, didn't you? Okay, Mr. Policeman. Daniel Wright, I know you're trying to play good cop, bad cop with me, so I'll get to the point. Let me go, and I will ask my mom to pay you handsomely. You know her, right? Head of the Darlington conglomerate? Are you trying to bribe to law enforcement? You could get seven years in jail for this, plus the robbery sentence. I can assure you it wouldn't be less than ten years. T ten years? I, I didn't mean to. I just freaked out. I I'm rich, okay? I have everything I want. 
I, I wouldn't risk stealing something like that. You did send all the staff home, so there was no one to corroborate your story. How exactly did you get home? I told you I blacked out. All I know is I didn't do anything wrong. You couldn't find the necklace at my place or on me either. You have no evidence against me. Then enjoy a stay in a cell for 24 hours, in which time I shall find the proof I need to lock you away for a very long time. Wait, no, please trust me. Someone, anyone. This was so unfair. I just wanted to go home. Fortunately, that cop couldn't find any proof and had to let me go. Finally, after 24 hours behind cold bars, unjustly accused, all I need right now is a warm welcome from Mom and Kevin and a nice bath. But what I got was a slap in the face. How could you steal from the Woodley Joneses? Now they'll never do business with me again. Mom, I didn't do it. Why does nobody believe me? Would you look at yourself? Have you done anything good for this family? All you ever did was party, throw my hard-earned money out the window, then dare to cross me. You're no daughter of mine. Get out, now! I was shocked and heartbroken by her words. My own mother wouldn't believe me? So... I walked out. Just you wait, Mom. I'll prove it to you. I'm no thief. With Kevin's help, I rented a place not too far from home, but it was nowhere near the luxury I was used to. No worries. Once I proved myself innocent, things would get better. Now I just had to find that police guy, Daniel, that arrested me. He must have insight on the case, right? But when I arrived at the police station, I saw Daniel being scolded by his boss. You couldn't even solve the simplest case. Daniel, what has gotten into you? You're off the case. Jack, it's over to you. Leave it with me, sir. I won't let you down. Like some incompetence. <laughs> Sheesh, that Jack guy was such a douchebag. And Daniel sure did look glum about all of this. So I approached him and suggested we work together to find the culprit and kick Jack in the butt. At first, he refused, as apparently a suspect participating in the investigation was not procedure. Relax, it's not like I want access to classified documents or anything. Think of it as working with a suspect. If we cooperate, you could monitor me to see if I really am the culprit. It's a win-win. It's not like that. I'm no longer on the case. Jeez, I didn't expect you to give up so easily. So much for being a pro. Maybe your boss was right to reassign the case. <laughs> Who are you to judge me? You're still the number one suspect in this case, and I got my eyes on you, thief. So, is that a yes? Ugh, fine. Bingo. Surely there's no place better to hunt for clues than the crime scene, right? But Brian's mansion was locked down and had security everywhere. Luckily, Daniel told me he'd already studied the house's layout and knew that the only way to intrude without being noticed was through this door. Yes, folks, you heard it right. A dog door. The bar couldn't get any lower, could it? Just shut up. We sneaked through it and ended up in the staff kitchen. The main building has already been fully swept, as that's where we knew the main suspect was. The staff quarters weren't a focus point. Daniel launched into a CSI mode, checking the area for footprints, and I watched with fascination. He found a strange shoe print, which didn't belong to any of the staff, as they were required to wear uniform shoes. This type of shoe print is rare. This could be a big clue. I didn't want him to start accusing me again, so I wiggled my foot about. Ahem, <clears throat> it's obviously not my tiny size six feet. <laughs> I didn't say a thing about you. This obviously belonged to a man with size 12 feet. Is it your accomplice? Is he Bigfoot or something? Are you crazy? Who's accomplice, you madcap? Shush, are you trying to get us caught? Oopsie, just then, we heard running footsteps coming our way. Shoot, we gotta get out. The only escape is through this window. Again? Oh, what a burden. Daniel grabbed my hand, then we both jumped through the window. Smack! His shoe was right up my face. Ouch! Get your dirty foot off me! I tried getting up, and we ended up kissing. My... My first kiss. Wait, what is that sound? I turned around to see two big dogs growling at us. We run on the count of three, okay? One, just run! We ran straight to the road and caught a taxi, leaving behind those vicious dogs. Uh, your hand? Um. Oh, sorry. It was because of those dogs. Is being chased by dogs the in-trend? A few nights ago, I saw those exact two dogs chasing another man along this road. Daniel immediately asked the driver to show him his dashcam footage. It showed this tall, masked man in all black coming out of Brian's house. A shiver ran through me at the sight of him. There was something unsettlingly familiar. The next day, Daniel made me traipse into at least a dozen different shoe stores so he could ask the staff about the sole print we'd found last night, but no luck. 
The scorching sun was getting to me, so Daniel brought out this umbrella. Cute, huh? If only this big hole hadn't been directly above me. By lunchtime, I saw Daniel sweating in the heat, so I grabbed a tissue to wipe for him. The heat rose as we were so close, but once done, he was even more oily. <laughs> we're just like two peas in a pod. Later that day, we made it to this ancient shoe shop that said it was a Leighton, a brand that made customized handmade shoes. Wait, I've heard about that exclusive brand before, but... If someone could afford these shoes, why would they go out and about stealing? Daniel seemed to agree, and the investigation was at a dead end. The truth is, I had my suspicions about who the real thief was, so I went back to the crime scene to see if I could find any evidence. Daniel did say this dock door was the only other way in, so I searched around the area and spotted this shiny bracelet in a bush. Oh, I know who this belongs to. So, I've asked him to meet me here. I found your bracelet. Thank you so much. You know how important this is to me. The bracelet is a keepsake for my mom. She gave it to me before she passed away. I found it at Brian's house. The night you drove me to Brian's, did you go straight home afterward? Y yeah, of course. I've been on the investigation for a couple of days and found that the thief wore size 12 latent shoes. I gave you a pair for your birthday. The thief was also identified by a taxi driver's dash cam as a male, around 5 foot 10, the exact body figure of you. And now this bracelet? The coincidences are stacking up. But I can't believe it. Not without your explanation. After all, you are my brother. Y yes, it was me, but I had no other choice. I actually have a sister, a half-sister from my dad's side, and she's going through surgery. I really needed the money to pay her bills. I might look successful on the outside, but I work for your mom unpaid. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for all she's done for me, and I couldn't ask her for more, so I took the risk. Why didn't you tell me? I can help you. You were always embroiled in arguments with your mom, so I don't want to burden you further. And you only seem to need me when you're in trouble. That's true. Thinking back, we rarely talked. Even when we talked, it was always me complaining about mom to him without realizing mom has been the hardest on him. I hated what he did, but I knew he only did it to save his sister. And I felt terrible that I'd had Kevin's love and care all of these years, and she hadn't. Kevin, don't worry. Just leave it to me. The next day, Daniel came to see me and told me the police department had just found new evidence against me. The chocolates I'd given to Brian that night contained anesthetics. It all sounds very suspicious to me and may just change the direction of my investigation. Are you investigating me now? No, it's highly possible that the real culprit wanted to target you. I need your cooperation. We have to hurry before they blame it all on you. Who helped you prepare the present that day? No one. I bought them at the store. I felt awful lying to Daniel, but I couldn't let Kevin go down for this. Not when his sister needed him. It was time for me to put an end to this devastating chain of events. I went to the police station and confessed to stealing the necklace. They arrested me, and right at that moment, Daniel stepped in, surprised. Rebecca, what are you doing here? Let her go! What are you doing? We can't arrest her without evidence. Daniel, it's okay. I already confessed. What? That's nonsense. I insisted that I did it, and he had no choice but to let them arrest me. I know it's not that simple, Rebecca, and I'm going to prove it. Daniel was right. Everything was off about this trial. First, this Jack guy had somehow swapped all the evidence against Kevin to me, from my shoe prints on the staff kitchen to the recording from the taxi driver. Plus, the necklace was later found in Miss Rebecca Darlington's bedroom. It was never there in the first place. I wanted to speak up for myself, but that douchebag Jack shut me up. The judge was about to sentence me when Daniel kicked the door and barged in. Stop, Your Honor. I believe all the evidence presented to you was faked by him. The whole court bursted out in surprise. Turns out Daniel's boss had suspected Jack was a rotten apple, so he actually wanted to use this chance to expose him. He pretended to kick Daniel out of the case and appointed Jack instead to lure him into the trap. As predicted, after I confessed to the crime, Daniel followed Jack and saw that he was taking bribes from Kevin. Well paid. I'll fake the evidence. Rebecca will go down for this. Don't mess it up. It's tricky enough to get that brat to take the blame for me. He played me? There was no half-sister who's in the hospital? Ugh, don't look at me like that. My real mom only died because of your mom, Don Darlington. That woman flagrantly accused her of stealing. Mom was so distraught, she had a heart attack and... and passed away. Don only adopted me out of guilt, and she treated me like garbage making me run around for you. So I decided to take revenge, show them how being wrongly accused of something can ruin lives. But look where vengeance got him. He was a monster, and I really wondered, was it really worth it?
In the end, both Jack and Kevin went to jail. Unfortunately, without Kevin as key personnel to help out with my family business, it went into turmoil. So I offered to help mom with it. You do that after everything I put you through. We're a family. I also felt bad for taking you and what you provide me for granted. I'm so ashamed of how I treated you. I've been cold, controlling, and unfair on you and Kevin. It's my fault he turned against us and sought revenge. Mom, it must have been hard for you running the business and caring for me and Kevin, especially without Dad. I forgive you and want to just put it behind us and start again. Now, I just had one last person to make amends with. Rebecca, I... I didn't think you'd ever want to see me again. I didn't. I was so mad, but then I realized that being that way was getting me nowhere. To forgive others means forgiving and liberating ourselves. I walked out of the prison feeling much more positive about it all and saw Daniel waiting for me. Say, we make a good team. What do you think about being my partner? Partner? For investigative purposes or for life? Hmm, how about both? Hey everyone, I'm Ellie, and my genius inventions are set to make me the next Thomas Edison. If you want to see more of my one-of-a-kind inventions, please comment and don't forget to like and subscribe to Animated Story Show. My mom passed away when I was little, so since then, it's just been me, dad, and my older sister, Kara. Dad's an independent scientist. Growing up, he was always inventing something and let me help around. Naturally, I developed a passion for inventing from an early age. You're playing frisbee and you're hungry, but you don't have a plate to eat your food. Has this ever happened to you? No. I present to you the frisbee food plate. Okay, okay, no frisbee plate. How about these goggles that help you cut onions without tearing up? Or this cool food hat, perfect for all your TV snack needs. Okay, so maybe they weren't ready for my inventions back then, but at least Kara seemed to like them. Like this alarm clock that only goes off when the puzzle has been solved. She's a doctor, so it's important she gets up on time and keeps her mind alert. I want to do well too. It's my dream to be an inventor just like dad. So I studied hard and managed to get a scholarship into the most prestigious private school in the state. While I was getting used to my new school, dad was working hard to make sure I got everything I needed. Everyone loved his inventions, including the Bancrofts, one of the wealthiest families in town. They hired him to design a robot chef system, but due to a system error, it short-circuited and set their mansion on fire. Luckily, no one was hurt, but dad's reputation was at stake. He had to pay for the damages, which meant we had to sell our home. Still, we didn't have enough money. Just then, a woman, Mrs. Harding, came to see Dad and told him that she'd settle everything on one condition. He had to live in the mansion and work exclusively for her. Dad didn't have much choice, so he agreed and asked for me to tag along too. As for Kara, she received a high-paying job offer to provide round-the-clock care for a coma patient, so she moved into the hospital. So Dad and I started our new venture, only mansion life didn't go so well. As soon as we stepped through the huge doors, Dad was bundled off into the basement to work. And me? I became Mrs. Harding's own personal servant. This was so not cool, so I decided to get sweet revenge. I tinkered with Mrs. Harding's high heels so I could control them with a remote. Only I was busted by Ariana, Mrs. Harding's daughter. What are you up to? I, I, I'm just... Oh, I see. Hmm, clever. Let me help you. What in the cinnamon toast? So we watched Mrs. Harding put the heels on, wobbled about, and tumbled over. Mission completed. Nice one, Ellie. That's the funniest thing I've seen all year. So what's up with you and Mrs. Harding? Mom's always so strict on me, but Dad is the opposite. Only he's traveling, so Mom's running the Milo Corporation for the time being, and now she's turned into even more of a tyrant. From then on, Ariana and I became friends and spent our free time pulling funny pranks on Mrs. Harding together. We rearranged her laptop keyboard, messed with her water flosser, and tampered with her bedroom light. I wanted to help Dad with the finances, so at school, I opened up a design-on-demand inventing service for some extra money. Queen, the school Queen Bee noticed and made an order with me. High heels that convert to flats will make partying easier. Put me down for a pair in size 7 and make sure they're hot pink. I finished the order, then excitedly gave them to Queen. Only she fell on her butt. You did it on purpose, didn't you? Ugh, I'll make your life a misery. I made them based exactly on your order. Hey, you got what you ordered, so leave her alone. 
Turns out this is Owen, who's also here on a scholarship. Owen's a science guy too, so we clicked instantly. One night, I was serving dinner when I overheard Ariana ask her mom why her dad wasn't back home yet. Ariana, he has flown to India for a spiritual retreat. Huh? That doesn't sound like something dad would do. Yes, well, the spiritual retreat is helpful in running the company. He'll be back soon. Now eat your greens. Ariana seemed very confused still. I knew her pain, as I missed my dad too. Feeling down, I went to see Kara to talk to her about it. But Kara appeared with two giant bodyguards. What's with the walking mountains? My patient is very important, so they're here to ensure information security. It's no big deal, sis. Just pretend they're not there. I felt bad that Kara had to work under such extremes for our family, so I was determined to sell more of my inventions. Everyone knows your inventions suck. Quit clogging up the hallway already. We could come up with better inventions. See, straight A's here. Those mean girls who were always ranking last in class now became top students? Pfft, how you achieve those grades doesn't count. Yeah, they definitely didn't earn those A's themselves. And you, that desperate for money, huh? Well, it's a long story. So I told him about my family's misfortune and how lucky I was to have Ariana as a friend, despite her being the daughter of the Myla Corporation owner. She seems cool. Why don't we invite her to the arcade with us? So the three of us went there, and Owen quickly acquainted himself with Ariana. It was good they were getting on, but hello, I was still here. When Ariana went to the restroom, I asked Owen, So, you like her then? Why? You're not jealous, are you? J jealous No way! Then, Owen suddenly turned serious and told me, actually, he's been researching AI. Recently, there were some AI unethical products on the market. Some even took advantage of the face recognition feature to secretly withdraw money from millionaires' bank accounts or stock them. You know those girls bragged about getting straight A's? Well, they used a cheating device that I suspect came from the Myla Corporation. No way! My dad works for Myla. He wouldn't be behind this. He couldn't. I don't know, Ellie. All I know is companies that use science and tech irresponsibly are a big bugbear of mine. And I had no intention of flirting with Ariana. I only approached her to do some more digging. And maybe we could sneak into the basement to talk to your dad about it. It's impossible. It's like Fort Knox. There's a security guard there 24-7. Owen assured me that between us, we'd figure out a way. I was pondering how best to sneak in to see Dad when Ariana pulled me into her room. Owen is cute, isn't he? Will you help matchmake us? Huh? That was quick. If Ariana knew Owen only hung around with her to find out about Myla Corporation, she'd be really hurt. But she was relentless, so in the end, I reluctantly agreed. I set up a date for them, but seeing them together sucked, so I decided to tag along. But anyway, the date turned out helpful. Not sure what sweet talk Owen had been saying to Ariana, but she agreed to help me and Owen sneak into the basement. The next day, Ariana helped distract the basement security guards. We sneaked in and found Dad on the floor, unconscious. I rushed to his side and urged Owen to help me carry him out. Mom's home. Help Owen Lee first. When Mrs. Harding saw me helping Dad out, she went berserk. How dare you remove him from the basement? He has work to do. I found him passed out. You're overworking him. If you don't let me take him to hospital, I'm suing you for negligence. Mrs. Harding reluctantly gave in and ordered the guards to take us to the hospital. At the hospital, Mrs. Harding kicked me out of the room and insisted on seeing her private doctor. I couldn't believe my eyes when Kara walked in. When Kara finished, she stepped out and told Mrs. Harding, Mr. Miller is awake. Leave him here and I will care for him alongside the other patient. No! I pay you to focus your care solely on one patient. Miller will be taken elsewhere to rest. So it's Mrs. Harding who hired my sister to care for this mysterious coma patient. I ran to talk to Kara, but Mrs. Harding pulled her away. Fine, I would just have to investigate what she was up to myself. The next day I was by my locker when Owen appeared, so I filled him in on what had happened at the hospital. I took these from the basement. Look, this one has the template for the cheating device Queen and our friends use. So Mrs. Harding hired my dad to make these unethical inventions for illegal profit. I... I just didn't think he'd ever do something like this. The design's just a portable device that could go through metal detectors. Your dad's a righteous scientist. Mrs. Harding must have pressured him into making this. We'll find proof to prove this. That's right. I have to get my dad out of this. Don't worry. I'm always here for you. We're in this together. 
Oh, I see. So you two are framing my mom? Ariana, you don't know what's going on. Oh, I don't? Then tell me, is this why you approached me? No, no. Let me explain, Ari. And you. You let him use me? <gasps> Am I a joke to you two? Then she stormed off. What I feared the most had come true. Ariana was furious with us both and ignored us since then. Then, a few days later, a huge news report broke. Science no match for monk life? Myla CEO Harry Harding moves into monastery and leaves a million-dollar corporation to his wife, Dazzy Harding. I and Owen were so shocked to hear the news. Just then, Ariana came to tell us. Mrs. Harding had been acting odd, so she eavesdropped on her call and heard her mention Mr. Harding, then looked very nervous and shady. Ariana knew something was up, so she paid a private investigator to delve in deeper, and turns out, her dad never went to India. And now that he's back, he refused to see me and was all surrounded by bodyguards. That's it. We gotta get to the bottom of it. So the next day, Ariana went inside her mom's room. Mom, you've been so distant lately. Can we spend some time together? Just you and me? While the coast was clear, I sneaked into her office and rummaged around. Using my lockpick, I opened her drawer. Inside was a treatment plan with Mr. Harding's name on it. I went to the hospital with Owen and spoke to Kara about the treatment plan. There is nothing unusual going on. Ellie, go home. Feeling defeated, we left, but then we bumped into a doctor. What is this regimen? It's designed to make the patient's condition worse. We were shot, but before I could ask him any more about it, I saw Kara get into a luxury car and leave. We jumped into a cab and followed her. The car pulled into this heavily guarded mansion. We knew we couldn't get inside by the front, so we sneaked behind the mansion, climbed over the wall, and shuffled along the side of the building. The door was locked, so Owen kept watch while I used my lockpick to enter. We crept across the kitchen, but I accidentally knocked some pan over and made a thump. Who's that? Owen immediately pulled me behind the fridge to hide as the guard shone a flashlight around. Gosh, this tight space made us way too close to each other. I could hear our hearts beating in sync. The guard finally gave up, and we left the room. Suddenly, I spotted Kara turning in the hallway. Follow Kara. I'll stay here and play lookout. As Kara stepped into a room, I saw Mr. Harding lying there. Kara, what's going on? Kara looked surprised seeing me and pulled me to the hall. Ellie, you shouldn't be here. Is that Mr. Harding lying in the room? That's right. Mr. Harding has been in a coma due to an accident during his trip. I was hired by his wife to take care of him. But when he started to recover, Mrs. Harding asked me to put him in a coma for good. I pretended to do as she said, but secretly, I've been helping him. Hmm, then who was the man showing up as Ariana's dad before? What on earth do you think you're doing here? Mansion, go into lockdown! Voice verification, not recognized. Surprised, huh? We've reset the system. Now it only responds to me. Seemed like Mrs. Harding had installed an AI system to control the mansion. Luckily, Owen managed to reset it. <gasps> How could you? Look what else I found in your mansion. You trapped Mr. Miller here and forced him to build a robot to impersonate Ariana's dad without telling him the truth. Dad's also here? And the man showing up as Ariana's dad before was the robot he had created. Restrain them at once. Well, I guess it's time to use my flycatcher. I shot Mrs. Harding and the bodyguards in the eyes. Security, get them! Right then, someone showed up on the yard. I'll distract them with a the robot. Those dumb guards mistook the robot for the real Mr. Harding and ran after it. Let's get out of here. Mansion, lock down! The five of us ran out of there, while Mrs. Harding and those guards were immediately locked inside. As everyone was back at the mansion, Ariana insisted on me taking her to see her mom. Why, mom? Why did you do this to dad? I sacrificed everything for your father. My assets and my youth. Myla is what it is today because of me. Yet to him, I was nothing more than a housewife. After his accident, I saw a means to take back what was rightly mine. If only he ever once listened to me. Poor Ariana, she doesn't deserve any of this. Our family was finally reunited, and Ariana let us stay in her home until we found somewhere else to live. As for Mr. Harding, thanks to Kara's efforts, he regained consciousness and is on his way to making a full recovery. Kara's a great doctor, and I think that is a soft spot for her. I'm cool if they, you know, get together. Yeah, I think so too. By the way, I'm sorry about Owen and 
You, I... Oh, I already forgot about that. You and him are made for each other. I'm out. Oh, there he is. Go get him, girl. Owen showed up with some flowers, looking all dressed up. Hi, Owen. Um, why are you here? You texted me, asking me to pick you up for a date. I didn't. <gasps> Ariana! Well, too bad. I'm here already. So, will you go out with me? Y yes And with that, he pulled me in for the sweetest kiss ever. That's my dad, Marcus Baldwin, the world-famous jockey. Now he's the chairman of a super successful horse racing club. As his cherished only child, I was given everything I could ever dream of. But then, something big happened that changed things. Before I tell you more, don't forget to like and subscribe. At the age of eight, I was in the playroom brushing my doll's hair when dad let this tatty looking woman and her daughter in. Audrey, I'd like you to meet Belinda and her mom. They're going to be staying here for a while and be our new mates. Belinda looked so frightened, so feeling bad for her, I took her hand and let her play with my dolls. We soon became the best of friends, and I even managed to persuade dad to let her attend the same school as me. Unsurprisingly, I grew up obsessed with horses and dreamed of becoming a famous jockey like dad. I practiced riding my horse, Jackal, every day after school, and we became quite the formidable team. Soon, I was winning a heap of junior contests, and even the newspapers predicted I'd be the next big name in the world of horse racing. This certainly helped my popularity at school, and I began a clique full of elite members. However, there was one slight problem. Due to Belinda's humble background, the other girls didn't get with her. Where did you get those shoes from? Your grandma? Did you let your grandma style your hair too? Come on, girls. Let's see if the canteen has any oat muffins left. Everything was practically perfect, and to put the cherry on top of the cake, I was invited to a gala event for talented young jockeys. I needed to look the part, so I got my driver to take me to the mall to find the most amazing outfit. But on the way, everything changed. I woke up in the hospital, wearing an ugly gown and feeling dizzy with confusion. Oh my, you're awake! Huh? Why am I here? Sweetie, you were in a car accident. You've been in a coma for the last two years. Two years? W what? No way! That meant I'd missed out on two whole years of my life and was now 17! I missed my own sweet 16! Once I got over the initial shock of being Sleeping Beauty, I made sure to ask the most important question. Is Jackal okay? Who won the Grand Youth Championship? After catching up with my parents, they told me something even more surprising. Audrey, you've been very poorly, and we thought we were going to lose you. You needed a new kidney, but we weren't matches. But Belinda was, and she donated you hers. We are so grateful to her that when her mom sadly passed away, we decided to adopt her. She's now your sister. I was sad to hear about Belinda's mom, but grateful for what Belinda did for me. I'd always seen her as my sister anyway. Right after I got discharged from the hospital, I was excited to get back to school and resume my life. Only, it seemed the world had moved on without me. No one dressed like me anymore, and I was stuck in a class with 15-year-olds. I tried to interact with them, so when I saw the teacher pinning up a picture of an elderly man, I asked if this was her grandpa. The whole class fell silent for a second, then suddenly exploded with laughter. It's the president, Audrey. Ugh, how was I supposed to know? At lunchtime, when I went to join my old friends, I overheard them talking. 2021 called. It wants its tennis skirt back. Hmm? What language is she speaking? Oh my god, Audrey is like an alien. She doesn't know anything. I mentioned the lucky girl syndrome trend, and she literally looked at me like a fish. Come on now. You know she can't help it. Let's go get some cheese fries. Anything you say, Belinda. <laughs> Belinda was on my side, right? Hmm. It kind of felt like she'd stepped right in and taken my place. At least my parents would be glad to have me home, right? Wrong. Mom was always shopping, attending yoga class and the spa, but she didn't ask me to go with her. Instead, she always asked Belinda. It felt like she'd forgotten that me, her real daughter, actually existed. Meanwhile, at the riding club, as I traipsed through the stables, I heard Dad talking to Belinda about an upcoming event. I'm so lucky you're here to help promote this event. I'd be lost without you. I no longer fit in at school at home, or at the horse racing club. Life has changed around me, and I felt frozen in time. <sighs> Worse still, I had to take this gross medicine. One time my maid was chasing me around the furniture trying to make me take it, but I used ornaments, cushions, and books to block the path. I was so distracted making my obstacle course that I bumped straight into Douglas Barron, my dad's business partner. My, my, you certainly are a determined young lady. 
Later that evening, Dad called me into his office. I thought he was going to grumble at me for not taking my meds, but instead he said something I wasn't expecting. It seems that Douglas is rather impressed by you. He wants you to date his son, Damien. The firm's been under a lot of pressure recently, and having Douglas on side would be beneficial, especially as he's our biggest stakeholder. What? You want me to date a stranger just to help your business? I can revive the business myself without having to do that. I just need to win the horse racing tournament. No, it's too soon after the coma. You're not ready yet. Dating is the only way. Pfft. As if I was going to listen to Dad. So I secretly came here with Belinda. I was about to saddle up Jackal, but then I got a whiff of horse manure and began to feel dizzy and nauseous. Dad suddenly showed up and took me to the hospital. Turns out, I'm allergic to horse manure. Ugh. Then Dad started yelling at me for training without his permission. Thankfully, Belinda informed me what was going on and told me about your allergy. Belinda? Why? Sorry, sis. I only told Dad as I'm worried about you. Whatever. I'm still going to horse race again. Actually, there's physical therapy, and if you pass the agility test, you could still get back to training. Dad, please. Fine. Do the therapy, but only if you go on this date with Damien. I agreed to go on the date, but I never said anything about being well-behaved on it. <laughs> so in order to prepare for our special date, I watched this tutorial video. How to dress to attract men. A tutorial. Rule number one, make sure your hair is long and never put up. Rule number two, make sure to show a little skin, ladies. Rule number three, footwear should be dainty and delicate. And ta-da! As I showed up at the restaurant looking ridiculous, I instantly recognized this quirky guy from school, Damien. So I made sure I had the most unapproachable expression on my face. As soon as I sat down, I purposely ordered the weirdest food combo, ice cream hamburger. <laughs> I was convinced he'd think I was a lunatic and leave, but instead he reached over and drank a bite of my ice cream burger. Hmm, interesting. What? How could he like that? Someone please call the food police over here. Your fashion sense is so refreshing. Everything about you is fascinating. I am rather smitten. The rumors about him being quirky are definitely true. After the disastrous date with Damien, I met with Cooper, a medical student at the hospital who was helping me with my physical therapy. During the training, he was attentive and super encouraging. I was beginning to feel better, but then Damien showed up and insisted on staying there so he could check Cooper was doing his job properly. He wouldn't stop humming annoying tunes and munching on potato chips really loudly. Then at home afterward, he wouldn't leave and continued bugging me. When he finally left, I moaned to Belinda about how annoying he was. But to my surprise, she said she thought he was cute and funny? Hang on, does this mean Belinda likes Damien? On the day of the physical examination, I passed every single test without any mistakes. I was smiling as the doctor made his announcement. Miss Baldwin, I'm afraid you failed the assessment. I ran out of there and cried to myself. I felt someone sit next to me and was about to tell them to go away when I realized it was Cooper. Audrey, the improvements you've made are impressive. I was sure you'd pass. Seeing his caring face made me feel a little better. We talked some more and then he offered to drive me home. As we walked around the corner to the parking lot, we heard Belinda raising her voice with, The doctor! We stopped to listen. I'm not giving you more money! I already paid you for failing Audrey! Sign this so I can be sure you'll keep this a secret! What? How could Belinda betray me like this? Belinda, why? Why did you do this? You don't understand how hard it is living in your shadow. I love the horse riding club, but you're coming back, and there will be no use for me there anymore. You ruined everything! Then she stormed off, leaving me standing there stunned. I immediately got home and told Dad what she'd done. I expected him to be on my side, but... I'm sure you're overthinking the situation. Besides, you should be grateful to Belinda. Not only did she save your life, but now she has agreed to marry Damien to save the company. Ugh! Belinda was only doing this to steal my life! It wouldn't work. I was more determined than ever to go back into horse riding and claim back my life. Mine! Meanwhile, Cooper helped find another doctor to test me, and this time I passed. I showed my results to Dad, and he finally allowed me to go back to training. But when I brought up Belinda bribing the doctor again, he just remained quiet. Am I even his daughter anymore? Okay, change of plan then. I met up with Damien to ask about his marriage with Belinda. So, did you agree to the marriage? No way! I don't want to marry whatever her name is. Great! I mean, that's sad. Well, my heart belongs to you. Hmm, how about we get payback on them and fake date? Just faking it, though, if you don't mind. Fake? Real? If it means being your boyfriend, then I'll do it! 
So we immediately returned home, walked inside and linked arms and gave each other a lovey-dovey looks. Belinda's scrunched up face was a picture. I resumed horse riding practice and got around my allergy problems by using sachets and spraying perfume all over myself. It worked at first, but then I started getting allergic to the sachets too. Cooper immediately took notice and the next day he showed up with some homemade herbal sachets. Not only did they help cure my allergy, but they also had a calming effect on me. Without the allergy bothering me, I could focus on practicing, and soon I was back to my amazing former riding self again. I showcased my talents to the club and everyone seemed impressed. A talent like you should be head of the club. Yeah, I may not be a big talker like someone I know, but actions speak louder than words. Belinda was clearly jealous of my rise to success, so she pulled some mean pranks on me at school. One time she suddenly turned nice and offered me a coffee, but it turned out she had snuck hot sauce in it. I was so mad. I changed her ringtone to fart sounds and called her number. It was hilarious. <laughs> But then she suddenly fainted and was taken to the school infirmary. Oh, come on. She was so hurt she fainted. I told the other students she was faking it. But instead of listening to me, they all took Belinda's side. You're so ungrateful. Belinda even gave you her kidney, yet you scared her so much she fainted? Yeah, you wouldn't be here today without her. What kind of person are you? Feeling deflated and not listened to, I ran off. I stormed home and, on the way, bumped into Cooper. Unable to hold my emotions anymore, I burst into tears. He insisted we went for a walk, and I ended up spilling out everything to him. Hmm, I don't condone what Belinda did, but I kind of see it from her perspective. She's an orphan who longs for a family. She finally found her place in the world, and then you woke up and became a threat. I never thought of it like that before. I realized the best thing I could do was to stop the pointless revenge and put all my energy into my recovery. I stopped hanging around with my clique, then broke up with Damien. I trained hard at the club, but not for my dad or the company, but for myself. Belinda showed up and tried provoking me, but I just ignored her. All my hard work paid off, and I qualified for the tournament. At the tournament, I was leading the race and felt unstoppable. But then some bees started buzzing around Jackal's face. He freaked out and started bucking. Then everything went dark. I woke up in hospital feeling drowsy and saw someone rummaging in my bed. Belinda, what are you doing? Then Cooper appeared. Is this what you're after? I saw Belinda swap the sachets for pollen ones to attract the bees. I bet she also switched the ones before to worsen your allergies. What did I do to deserve this? It's so easy for you, isn't it? Because of you, I've lost everything. Belinda, how could you? Apologize to Audrey right now. No, I won't. This is all your fault. It's all my fault. Many years ago, I was in a relationship with Belinda's mom. We ended on amicable terms, but it was only in her final days that she told me the truth. Belinda is my daughter. I didn't want to upset anyone, so I kept it to myself. But then when you needed a kidney and Belinda ended up being a match, I used this as a reason to suggest adopting her. Then you woke up and we were so happy. I didn't realize how this had affected Belinda or you, Audrey. Please forgive me. I want to put it right. Mom and me were so shocked and Mom told him to go and find Belinda. After Dad left, Mom hugged me. Sweetie, both you and Belinda deserve warmth and love. I promise things will be better from now on. As I left the hospital the next day, I saw Belinda walking toward me. I'm so sorry. You've been nothing but good to me, and I was horrible. I was so worried about you when you were in the coma. But when you woke up, I got scared no one would want me anymore. I care about you, Audrey. You're my sister. I wrapped my arms around her. You've always been a sister to me, Belinda. But please, no more pranks. Then I saw Cooper walking over to me, holding a huge balloon. Looks like you have company. I'm glad you both made up. Here, I got you this. So, this is the Roomba Club. Hmm, why isn't the guy here? Was I wrong? No way, I did lots of digging. Oh, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not a stalker. I'm just doing my job. It's obvious that there is something fishy about this case. Want to know the details? Please like and subscribe. I'm Faith McKinnon, the only daughter of a private detective. That probably sounds cool, but my dad is actually really carefree. Maybe that's why he only took on enough trivial cases to make ends meet. I haven't always paid much attention to his business, though. I mainly focus on studying, so our future can be brighter. What? What are you saying, sir? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm in. You can count on me. Faith, I just got a big job. A customer had paid him handsomely to investigate this case. A girl named Selena Martinez just had an accident and fell into a coma. 
but there was no CCTV on the road, and the heavy rain erased all traces. The police couldn't find any evidence, so they concluded that it was a traffic accident. But Mr. and Mrs. Martinez didn't believe it and suspected her boyfriend, Oscar Davis, was involved. Thus, they had to rely on my detective dad. Ha <laughs> ha, looks like folks need my help after all. Me, McKinnon, can solve any case. Conveniently, those two kids go to the same school as me, so dad asked me to keep an eye on them. Okay, nothing complicated, so I agreed. That's why I'm here. I heard Oscar loved Roomba and never missed a class, but why hasn't he shown up today? I was looking around when a hand patted my shoulder. What are you doing? Ah! Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Oh my, am I dead? Because I swear I'm seeing an angel. Look at his eyelashes framing those beautiful hazel eyes in that super touchable long dark hair. Hey, you still with me? Are you here to join our Roomba squad, princess? If so, you're looking at the right person. I'm Zane, head of this club. Uh, yes, I'm Faith. I love Roomba. Well, joining this club will surely help me with my mission, won't it? But I knew absolutely nothing about this Roomba dance thingy. Gosh, how could they dance with those heels so freaking high? I try to copy other students, but my legs were just not listening, causing me to stumble. And luckily, Zane caught me just in time. Are you good? Let me show you some basics before you hurt yourself. Or someone else. Then Zane took me aside, and we started to dance with his arms wrapped around my waist. With each twirl, I felt like he was pulling me closer and closer, and I couldn't stop blushing. Was Roomba supposed to always be like that? Then our eyes met. His gaze was so soft and dreamy and angry. Zane stopped in the middle, and his face darkened. Right at the door was Oscar. Zane immediately dragged him outside. I sneakily followed them to see they were quarreling at a corner. Drop your act already. Let me see, Selena. Please. You have some nerve asking to meet my sister after what you did to her. How many times do I need to tell you that I had nothing to do with her accident? Keep lying all you want, but I'll find evidence. You'll soon have to pay for what you did. Zane was Selena's brother? That meant we were on the same boat. The investigation could have been going much more smoothly if I'd known this earlier. I went straight to Zane, saying, Selena Martinez was your sister? Yeah, why are you- I'm helping to investigate her accident. Oh, really? Zane was surprisingly cooperative in helping me answer some questions for the investigation. My parents just can't help but suspect Oscar had something to do with it. He's kind of obsessed with our Selena. She'd rejected him many times, but he wouldn't stop pining for her. And eventually she gave in. But that only kicked in his possessive behaviors. He bought gifts and controlled what she wore every day. He followed my sister everywhere, even to the restroom to make sure she's safe, and climbed to her window to check her sleep every night. Jeez, that's crazy. Selena was having too much and decided to end things with him for good. But after that, she was found unconscious in an accident. It can't be a coincidence. I'm sure Oscar's obsession has turned into rage. Wow, it really was impossible to judge someone just on appearances. Oscar looked so nice, yet... To gather more information, I asked around about Oscar and Selena. Selena used to be kind of mean, but ever since she and Oscar became an item, she's like another person. Much kinder and nicer, I would say. Yeah, they were really sweet together. I was surprised to hear she broke up with him. Huh? Sweet? Are they talking about another Oscar? I even went to Oscar's neighbors and discovered that his mom was the head of the Medical and Pharmaceutical Association. All I heard were good things about him. Oh, that sweet boy. He always runs right out to help me carry groceries. He even gave me his phone number to call him when I need help. Oscar is a real good kid. Every year on Halloween, he decorates a whole haunted house for the neighborhood kids and stays out there until every last trick-or-treater leaves with a sack full of candy. Things are getting way confusing. It's like Zane and the others were describing two totally different people. Why are you following me? I looked up to see Oscar. I, I, I'm not. I tried to run, but he grabbed me. Please don't lie to me. I know why you're here, and I want to cooperate. Because I too want this all to be over quickly. Only then can I see Selena again. Okay, I should give him a fair chance and make my own judgments about this guy. And I'm also really curious to hear his side of the story. I used to be picked on pretty often, until Selena started standing up for me. She was truly my knight in shining armor, and that's when I knew I'd fallen in love with her. And she actually liked me back. 
And that's when she came to do charity work with me for the first time. And we happened to meet in the Roomba Club and become partners. We were happy in love. Selena even bought me gifts and planned surprise dates. Things were good. Great, actually. But suddenly she broke up with me, then got into the accident. I just really want to see if she's okay. This guy seemed very sincere. A bit silly, even. He couldn't be the one who could scheme such a hateful plan, could he? But why does nothing match what Zane told me earlier? One of them must be lying. But who? Things were becoming perplexing. But that evening, when I got home, my dad told me that he had found a dash cam from another car, which filmed the moment Oscar's car hit Selena's. Case closed. Who would have thought a $15,000 case like this could be solved so easily? I'm such a genius. <laughs> With this pace, I'd be a millionaire before you knew it. Huh? That's it? No, something didn't add up here. My gut was telling me that Oscar the Sim couldn't be the cunning and ruthless mastermind behind all this. The next morning, I was startled by Dad's loud excitement. I'm on a headline, baby! Turns out the video had spread like wildfire on the news. But that's not all. Another part of the story was also revealed. Oscar, Dr. Davis's son, loved Selena Martinez but was rejected, so he threatened to tell his mom to cancel their new medicine's license. Selena still resisted him, so her family lost the medicine's permit and suffered great damage. Meanwhile, Oscar got so mad that he caused the accident. So there's some family conflict involved too, not just teenage love? Seeing loads of angry comments, I was so worried that I immediately ran to the Roomba Club to find Oscar. There, I found Zane grabbing Oscar's collar. I always know it's you. How are you going to deny it now? Wait, stop! Upon seeing me, Zane loosened his fists. You're going to pay for this. I swear I didn't do it, Faith. I don't know where that video came from. Please help me. I also felt things couldn't be that simple, so I came home to check the video again. Finally, I found something that was off. If the impact happened at that angle, Selena's left arm would have been injured, but it wasn't, according to the hospital's record. Dad, I think the video of the accident was fabricated. We need to confirm Selena's condition before making any conclusion. Well, this case is already closed. The Martinez family asked me to wrap it up as soon as the evidence was discovered. Why such a hurry? They spent all this money but didn't want a thorough investigation? The next day, I decided to investigate myself. I disguised as a nurse to sneak into the hospital, but Selena's room was strictly guarded. I had to find another entrance. Huh? Is that Zane? Right then, he saw me and immediately dragged me into a corner, signaling me to keep silent. Be careful, or they will see you. What are you doing sneaking around? I'm afraid my parents might be doing something sketchy. Explain. I've heard them talking with the press to keep posting those defaming articles about Oscar's family. And they even mentioned something about revenge. So you followed them here? Suddenly, I was forbidden from seeing Selena, as the doctor said she needed absolute peace to heal. But it feels like my parents don't want me to talk to her. Come to think of it, it's also them who made me suspect Oscar from the beginning. That's what I thought. But why should I believe you when you've been saying awful things about Oscar? Maybe you're working with them. Last semester, I studied abroad. That's when Selena and Oscar started dating. All the things I knew about them were told by my parents. Actually, believe me or not, I'm going to find out the truth with or without your help. Seeing his determined attitude, my heart softened a little. If it's true that your parents were up to something bad, are you still willing to expose them? If so, what they did is just wrong, and I need to know why. Right at that moment, I got a call from Dad. Well done, Faith. You were right. That video was fabricated. I believe you, Zane! Three days later, it was reported that Oscar's mom resigned due to the recent scandal. Then Dad showed up in an unusually neat suit. You better go get ready, kiddo. The Martinez has invited us for dinner to celebrate solving the case. I think they might throw in a bonus on top of the initial amount. My dad is quite the performer, isn't he? All right, time to solve this case. At the dinner, everyone seemed extremely happy, especially Mr. Martinez. Thank you so much for giving us the closure we needed for our daughter's accident. No, I have to thank you for giving me such a big case. Now people will line up to have me solve their cases. <laughs> they kept hosting, laughing, and talking happily like two old friends. Then Mrs. Martinez went to get some more food for them. I turned to see Zane looking a bit sad. I didn't expect Dr. Davis could stoop this low. 
She got what she deserved. How dare she say our medicine was of poor quality. And rejected the license. She almost ruined our plan to make loads of money. What a wet blanket. Luckily, we got quick-witted to stage a fake accident to frame her boy. Hearing that, Mrs. Martinez quickly ran to cover her husband's mouth, but couldn't make it in time. Aha! So you admit everything. I recorded them all. This will be evidence to expose you in court. We admit nothing. Check your recording. When I turned it on, it was all static. We couldn't hear anything. Unfortunately for you, this is the family business room, equipped with signal jammers and anti-eavesdropping devices, so you have no evidence. Mom, stop it! Right then, Oscar walked in, with Selena on a wheelchair. Why are you here? You're supposed to be at the hospital resting. All thanks to my mom. She knows someone in the hospital and could help Selena get out. Or else, how long were you planning to keep her locked up? It turns out Selena had woken up a week ago, but her parents kept it a secret. That's why Zane wasn't allowed to visit her out of fear that everything would come to light. Mom, that's not enough for you. You asked me to pursue Oscar at first to get close to his mom. But when the plan didn't work out, you then forced me to break up with him. But I've already fallen in love with Oscar for real. It broke my heart to do so. That night, I was driving in a totally lost mind and crashed into a tree. But who knows, my own cruel parents would use their daughter's accident as an excuse to frame Oscar and his family. Oh, honey, you're saying this because you're not well yet. No, we all know what you did. Just confess. Oscar and his mother are good people who don't deserve any of this. I love you guys. That's why I have to make it right. You ungrateful little traitor. Everything we do, we do for you. But it doesn't matter. A court needs concrete evidence, not just the words of a girl. I'm really disappointed in you guys. I hope that you would step up and take accountability. You could have gotten a reduced sentence, but I guess now we need to turn in the real evidence. I held up the confession video of the person hired by Selena's parents to fake the dash cam. At this point, Mrs. Martinez fell to her knees, sobbing dramatically. I paid you to find the evidence against the Davises, not against us. Sorry, but we refuse to accept your money. We don't work for you. We work for justice. Soon enough, Mr. and Mrs. Martinez saw their day in court for their schemes, and the Davises' name was cleared. After the sentencing, Oscar's mom approached me and my dad. Thank you so much for fighting for the truth. You've saved our family's reputation. Our society needs more people who work and live for righteousness like you. I owe it all to Faith. Things would not have turned out the way they did without her master plan. From the fake resignation, to Selena's hospital escape, and even arranging a play to expose the Martinez's. It's true that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, isn't it? She's about to surpass my skill. I'll let you keep this for a few more years. It's true that I hadn't been interested in my father's job before, but this case made me realize my passion for solving crimes. So, we'll see. Now all the crazy things finally settled, Oscar and Selena are back together after everything they've gone through. They deserve to be happy with each other. Is this just me, or is their story really similar to Romeo and Juliet? Except, in the end, they're happy together. Suddenly, Zane walked up behind me. Wanna dance? Are you sure? You're the one who said I was a danger to myself and others. Then it's a risk I'm willing to take. I and Pearl were playing our favorite, playing Disney princess. You have to be the princess this time, Ruby. We're gonna make a perfect Elsa and Anna. No, I'm going to be your knight, fighting all the bad guys and protecting you, milady. Then a maid knocked on the door with a phone in her hands. That might be my parents. Ruby, the school called again. How on earth could you get all these words spelled wrongly? What kind of nurse is spelled with a Z? I am really trying. It's all right, Bay. Studying isn't for everyone, and she might be of a sport type. Sweet Pea, could you just try a little more next time? Good girl. We have to go now. Bye. I know you can do this. You just need to keep practicing. You're perfect, just the way you are. Hi everyone, I'm Ruby, and this is my little sister, Pearl. Since my parents were always away for business trips, it's always just been me and her, growing up together. You already know I was terrible at studying, but Pearl was nothing like me. She was a genius. 
What are you doing, Pearl? For God's sake, it's 6 a.m. The sun is still sleeping, and you should be sleeping too. Absolutely not. Today is my first day in high school, and I have to make a good impression. My streak must continue. Straight A's since 2015, I know, I know. As if your valedictorian title isn't impressive enough. I might be Ruby, the dumb kid who couldn't read half of a word. But it doesn't matter, because now I am Ruby, the awesome soccer captain. Yes! Go, Ruby! That's my sister, everyone! I led the school soccer team to win multiple trophies, and I also aimed at the varsity scholarship myself. Studying was still a nightmare, but I gradually accepted that I wasn't born for studying, but for soccer. So, all was well. So, that morning, I was walking with Pearl on her first day at school, when Beth and her clique approached us. Hey, Ruby! Ready to flunk your junior year? Aw, oh, Beth, still salty because coach left you on the bench yesterday? My advice for you would be to learn how to actually play soccer. Unfortunately, some of us have other things going on to focus on, like our brains. Oh, oops, you don't have one. You can't understand. Sorry. <laughs> Boo-hoo, funny. That's Beth on my soccer team who always messed with me like everyone else. But all's good now, as I had my dear sister studying in the same school as me. Uh, sis, I found my class. I have to go now. Bye. The next day at school, we had a new English teacher. Ruby Walker, could you read the summary on page 10? Oh, screwed. Oh, dear. Is that your thinking face? Didn't know you were capable of that. Sorry, teacher, but she can't read. <laughs> you know what? My thoughts today on the book can be summarized into the classic song by the amazing Taylor Swift. So the haters gonna hate, 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 but I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake it, it off, off shake, shake it, it off. off. Just then, the entire class was in a frenzy, and everyone was singing, dancing, like they were in the Eras tour. The teacher was so upset and tried to calm everyone down, but I was sent to the principal's office immediately. First trouble in the junior, huh, Ruby? Listen, both you and I know how much you mean to the team, but unfortunately, it is not enough anymore. New district laws state that students must average at least C-minus to be eligible for the varsity scholarship. What? But I'm the most qualified for it! I am sorry, but until you can move grades from whatever it is right now to a C-minus, you're off the team to focus more on your studying. Beth is now our candidate for the scholarship, and she'll take over your place. Beth? That girl who scored just five goals all season when I had scored 20? The world was really getting crazy. No way was I going to watch my passion get taken away from me that easily. I'm going to study hard. Right. I'm going to ask Pearl to tutor me. Ah, speak of the devil. Hi, Pearl. You know her. I heard she's kicked out of the soccer team because she's too dumb. Oh, no. Uh, no. How scandalous if our valedictorian did. <laughs> well, maybe now wasn't a good time. That night, I dozed off at my desk writing four words over and over again. I am not dumb. The news had spread that I got kicked off the team because of my grades, and the kids at school were vicious with their insults. Like I didn't have enough issues already, Pearl started to avoid me like a plague, as if she's ashamed of me. So I couldn't ask her to tutor me either. It's like the whole world was going against me. The district superintendent was visiting our school, and the principal chose the two smartest kids to give a welcome speech. Pearl and a new student, Joe, from my class. So he started to hang out a lot at our home to prepare for the speech. Hey, Ruby, need any help with tomorrow's test? Nah, I am famously unteachable. Don't waste your time on me, and Pearl is waiting for you. It's all right, she can wait. Let me help. Surprisingly, for the first time in my life, I felt like I could actually learn. There was something about the way he taught me that made me absorb knowledge naturally. Like, he understood me and my struggles. Hey, there you are. I've been looking for you. We have a test coming, so I was helping Ruby. And we have a huge speech to give on Thursday. You know nobody actually listens to those speeches, right? Anyway, I trust you to come up with something incredible. Pearl stormed out angrily, but the only thing in my mind then was that I actually could learn. Hey, Joe, please teach me more. Joe could help me learn to get better grades, and then I could finally get back to my team and win the scholarship. Later that night, when I was practicing some test questions Joe gave me, Pearl barged into my room. I am not comfortable with you spending time with my boyfriend alone. Boyfriend? I didn't know you were dating. Well, not yet. Not with you hogging him and not giving me space to charm him. Oh, sorry. I was just excited. Joe is an incredible teacher. I was actually learning. Yeah, right. Of course you're capable of that. Pearl left my room, and it felt like a knife went through my heart. Since when did she think of me like that? Like everyone else does. But she always believed in me.
The next day was the speech, and even though I was heartbroken, I still went to support her, and I clapped the loudest after she gave her amazing speech. Thank you for granting us a chance to study here. On behalf of the whole school students, I'll try my best to bring glory to our school's tradition. Wonderful speech, but I think before you bring glory to our school, shouldn't you teach your beloved sister, Ruby Walker, how to read first? I mean, maybe your dummy sister could learn one or two words from you before getting kicked out of her school. <laughs> the whole auditorium burst out laughing, and my rage was filling my body. I lunged at Beth and grabbed her stupid ponytail until she screamed so loud, even the moon could hear her. Teachers and guards tried to separate us, while other students were excitedly shouting and cheering. In the middle of the messy crowd, I saw Pearl look at me in shame. I ran to her, but she just brushed me off. It's you again. Joe isn't enough, and now you try to steal my spotlight as well. What? No, no, I never meant harm to you, I swear. But she didn't listen to me and angrily stormed off. I was so angry at my brain for always failing me, and at everyone. Now my dream was gone, and my dear sister hated me as well. I fell down on the bleachers and saw Beth wearing my captain's armband, gathering everyone to the morning practice. She waved at me with the widest smile. It was hard to fight the tears, so I let them fall. There you are. I was looking for you to continue our classes. I don't think we should continue our classes. Why? Pearl, she doesn't like you and I together, and she will hate me for this. Oh, uh, I will talk to her, but this is more important. You need to get back on the pitch. But you're just wasting your time on me. I'm just an idiot who ruined others' lives. No, you're not an idiot at all. You're dyslexic, like me. I've noticed your symptoms for a while, but I wasn't so sure. But I am now. Dyslexia? There's a name for this? So I'm not... I'm not stupid? No, you just learn differently. I will help you and teach you all the things the specialists taught me. My mind was fuzzy. I gave Joe a hug without thinking. I felt relief spread all over my body. I wasn't dumb. I was dyslexic. At home that night, I searched everything about dyslexia and even took an online assessment when suddenly Pearl barged in. You told Joe I like him? Um, yes and no, but not like that. Well, thank you so much. He just called to tell me he just considered me a little sister. And you know what? I saw you hugging him on the bleachers this afternoon. So you were going behind my back all this time? What a sister! Don't ever speak to me again! Pearl stormed out and kept her words of never speaking to me. It broke my heart to see us parting like this. Luckily, Joe comforted me and helped me stay focused on studying. Now that I knew what my problem really was and how to fix it, I improved every day. The letters didn't make me dizzy like before anymore, and our effort finally bore fruit, as I got my first B- ever on a test. And in no time, I got called to the principal's office. It has been incredible watching you turn your grades around. Good job, Ruby. I always knew. You're a gem like your name, and you just need some sharpening. Welcome back to the team. <laughs> Thank you! I ran out of his office and rushed to find Joe immediately. We did it! I'm back on the team! Congratulations! But that was all you. You did it, Ruby. That moment would have been perfect if I could celebrate with Pearl. I knew she didn't want to talk to me, but I really wanted to share this with her. But upon seeing me and Joe, she was just shooting me death rays. The joy in my mouth instantly turned to ash. I just wished we could go back to the old good days together. But I had no idea how. <sighs> With me coming back to the team, I reclaimed a captain title and was eligible for the varsity scholarship. And of course, my impressive record easily got me the win. Congratulations to Ruby Walker for winning this year's varsity scholarship. Come on stage. Thank you very much, sir. All I can say is I'm immensely grateful for this chance, and I'm going to try my best. Hi, everyone. Ruby's too shy, so she did prepare a speech here. Good luck. Except that I didn't prepare this note. Everyone in the audience all locked eyes on me, and I was sweating all over when I took the paper from her. Today is trim, trim, um... Oh, our scholarship winner just had a little problem. She just couldn't read. I hope it won't affect the scholarship much. Will it? I ran out of the hall before the tears blurred my eyesight. Joe was racing after me, but Pearl caught me first. Pearl, I don't really have time for your mocking now. No, no, I'm sorry. Joe told me about your dyslexia, and you should, you know? Yeah, but it can wait. 
But you need to go back there right now. You've tried so hard to earn this place. I wouldn't let my sister waste it just because of Beth's dirty move. Joe also nodded encouragingly at me. Pearl was right. It's my passion. It's me or no one who would claim it. So I walked back into the hall, and as soon as I appeared, everyone started to laugh. I stepped up to the mic, took a deep breath, and read the speech. There were still some stumbles and stuttering, but I went through to the last word. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby. You all can see I have some troubles reading because I have dyslexia. <gasps> all my life, I have struggled and accepted that I was stupid. Until now, I know I'm not. I still haven't figured out how to read big words, but I am not ashamed of my struggles anymore, and no one should bear the troubles I've had. Dyslexic people like me need others to help us, to acknowledge our difficulties, and to be given a chance like any others. We're not dumb. We just need a different way to learn. Thank you. The hall was completely silent for a while before standing up for an ovation. I walked away from the podium to see the scowling look on Beth's face. I went backstage, where Pearl gave me a warm hug. I'm so proud of you, and I'm sorry. I should have helped you, but instead I've been horrible or even cruel to you. Yeah, yeah, you've been forgiven. So now could you please just stay quiet? I just want to hold my little sister longer. I missed this hug. I missed Pearl. My Pearl. It's good to have my sister back. And just like that, my life was back to normal. Uh, of course, with some changes. There's something I need to tell you, Ruby. I'm sorry for the Joe thing. I let jealousy take over me and said bad things to you. But I realized he and I would never become a thing. But you would. Huh? No, we're just friends. Are you? Now come with me. Then she dragged me to the living room, where Joe and another boy were standing. Then she placed my hand in Joe's. Joe, could you please take care of my sister when I go out with my boyfriend? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, sure. Hi, I'm Kaylee from Washington. I might dress like a boy, but I'm actually the girliest girl you could ever meet. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I was born with shiny blonde hair and blue eyes, just like my mom. I never met my dad, but it wasn't really a big deal. There's no need to live in some fancy castle to feel like a princess. I was already one in my mom's eyes. She always pampered me with the cutest things in the world. You could give Rapunzel a run for her money, sweetheart. But tragically, mom left me in an accident when I was 10, and I had to move in with Selina, my mom's friend. She lived in a mansion where there were so many people dressed just like her. As soon as they saw me, they started to ooh and ah at me. What a porcelain doll. Bet she'll win any beauty pageants. She's just too lovely to be real. Shh, Miss Sanchez here doesn't like anyone who's prettier than her daughter. Yeah, she's been in a foul mood ever since the master left for his mistress. I only caught a bit of what they said before Selena dragged me into a corner. Sweetie, you heard them. Boys are bad news. Just look at your dad, for example. So stay away from them. Got it? Um... And the only way to repel them is if you look more like them. Then she told me to wear contact lenses to hide my blue eyes, cut my long locks, threw away my dress collection, and bought me clothes that basically drowned me. And voila, I look just like a teenage boy. One day, I was alone in the kitchen when I heard someone shouting, Bring me two smoothies now! I brought in two avocado shakes, but accidentally splashed one all over this girl's face, turning her into Shrek. Watch what you're doing! My daughter's angel face is destined to be Miss USA! How dare you! I, I'm i sorry, ma'am. Relax, mom. Avocado face masks are all the rage anyway. Sadly, I still had to take my punishment, but suddenly the girl walked towards me. Hey, I'm Beatrix. Let's go and play. But I'm... Don't worry, I'm here. My mom won't punish you anymore. Then she took me to her room. Wow, she even has a castle inside? Beatrix then put some wigs and makeup on me. I looked at myself in the mirror, and memories of my mom came rushing back. I quickly pulled out the photo of her that I carried with me all the time. We looked so alike. I was about to take my lenses out when Selena stormed in and dragged me back to my room. Don't you ever let me catch you here again, and keep your distance from Little Mistress. We're not from the same world as people like them, remember that? But little did Selena know, Beatrix had just asked her mom to allow me to go to school with her. And ever since then, we've been literally inseparable. I mean literally. She clung to me from living room to kitchen, from home to school. 
Honestly, the only time I could have a moment of peace was when I went to the restroom. Phew. Oh, maybe not. And each time we hung out was more than torture. I had to fight against the urge to act girly, hit my own hands whenever they started to reach for those pretty things, and now they ended up swollen. Think I'll glue them in my pockets next time. Then, one day, I arrived at school to the most terrible news ever! Kaylee, one of our female rugby players got injured, so I put you on the team. What on earth? I don't even know what rugby is! Here's Austin, your rugby coach. If you need anything, he's your guy. You know him? He might be handsome, but something about him screams bad news. People call him Awful Austin. You better watch out. And she wasn't exaggerating. At all. On the very first day, he already pushed me to my absolute limits in training. That I almost passed out. In the agility ladder exercises, I got my feet tangled up in the line and fell to the ground. But instead of a hand, all I got was his soulless look. Then one time, I missed the ball, causing it to hit another player. Hey, is this a joke to you? Do it properly. Keeping all Celine's words in mind, I zipped my mouth up and ignored him, who was definitely a boy. Oi, what's the attitude? You're bringing the whole team down. See? Cat got your tongue? Faking dumb doesn't work here. From tomorrow, extra training. No excuses. Beatrix was right. He was a devil. I was dragging my aching body home after training when I noticed a cute cat and stopped to pet it. The cat ran away, so I followed it, and ended up at the back gate of the school, which was totally off limits. I've never been here before. Whoa, look at this beautiful mural. It's so mesmerizing. What you doing here? Awful Austin? Um, I just... Anyway, did you paint this? It's amazing. Of course not. Stop prying. He was such a terrible liar. But to be honest, I didn't expect some jock like him to be interested in art, let alone actually be good at it. What are you two doing here? Don't move! Oh no! The guard has spotted us! Austin immediately grabbed my hands and started running. We hid in a small alley, and he pressed me against the wall with his strong arms. My heart was racing like crazy, and I could feel his too. We were so close that our faces were only inches apart, and the warmth of his breath made me blush even more. So I accidentally let out a squeal. Thankfully, before things could get any more awkward, the guard was gone. Don't even think of breathing a single word about this. Weirdly, this time his words didn't hurt at all. Maybe because I knew, beneath his tough jock exterior, he had his own secret. Just like me. I like your painting, so no need to hide it. Austin stopped for a bit, then kept walking. But I'm sure I caught a smile. After that day, he started to behave quite differently. More gently. He no longer went berserk at me, but helped me get through the training instead so I could catch up with the other players. I just had my first successful kick. Yay! I turned around to cheer with Austin, but out of nowhere, the ball came hurtling right at me, and he instantly caught it with one hand, while the other held me by the waist. Okay, that was awkward. This week, there'd be a senior prom at school, and Beatrix insisted we go. Of course, I gave her a no, but she was literally a leech, so I had no other choice. Wear this, Kay. It's a matching set. It'll be so lame if I wear this alone, please. Fine, but only because you've given me no choice. Yay, love ya. Eek. Wow, it smelled so good. What if I put it on? But wait, what about Selena? Forget it. It's not like she'll be at the prom. YOLO. I stepped into the ballroom with this gorgeous outfit on, my blue eyes, and the necklace my mom gave me. Everyone jaw dropped as soon as they saw me, and that's when I noticed Austin coming towards me. Hey, you look different tonight. Uh, I mean in a good way. Wanna dance? Sorry, girls time. Kaylee, look at the tasty food corner. Told you we had to come here. Oh, Beatrix, my friend here is starving. Can you show him where to grab a bite? Wow, sure handsome. We have cupcakes, biscuits, uh, and even brownies. Isn't this called choosing boys over friends? <laughs> Good for her, anyway. <laughs> then Austin gently led me in the waltz. He looked exactly like a prince from a fairy tale. As we fell in step, letting the rhythm control our movements, I felt my whole body tingle. The sparks were definitely flying. But suddenly, the music changed into trance. We looked into each other's eyes for a second. Then, hand in hand, ran across the crowd until we got outside. I could never imagine a tomboy could become like this. Actually, I'm not a tomboy. What do you mean? 
That's when I decided to tell him everything about how I was obsessed with girly things but had to suppress it all my life. It felt so good to let it all out after burying it the whole time. And Austin was such a good listener. Wow, Kaylee. I'm so sorry. Actually, I've also had to hide my passion for arts to help my father's business too. So what you said to me the other day really opened up something in me. So things were not easy for him either, huh? Suddenly, he pulled out a sketchbook and started drawing me. I wish this moment would last forever. His face then went all serious, but not in a cold way as usual, but instead, beaming with passion. Our eyes met, and I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest. And yes, I hoped this moment would last forever too. Then suddenly, he leaned closer to fix my hair. I was ready for a kiss. Then, Kaylee! Selena, how did she find out about this? Man, you know what's coming next. I can't believe you'd be this reckless. You're not my mom, and not every boy is like my dad. You were wrong. Mind your manners. Get changed now. Right then, Mrs. Sanchez came to interrupt us. Hang on. Are her eyes blue? And what's this? Uh, um, don't mind her. I bought this half price at the swap meet, ma'am. Then she signaled for me to flee the scene. If mom were here, she'd understand the way I feel. Blinking back tears, I suddenly felt a warm hand on my shoulder. Are you alright? I saw you leave with Austin. Did he cut your hair? It looks shorter. I'm okay, Beatrix. Oh wow, I have a similar necklace that my dad gave to me. This was from my dad too, except that I don't actually know who he is. Maybe your dad is my dad? <laughs> Zero for the joke, Beatrix. Oh, but why did Selena lie about the necklace to Miss Sanchez? So I went to find Selena right after, and she told me the most shocking thing ever. Beatrix's dad, the former master here, was actually my dad. He seduced mom, who used to be a maid here too. When Mrs. Sanchez found out, both of them were kicked out of the house. Then knowing mom was having me, he dumped her right away. Selena was afraid Mrs. Sanchez could see mom in me, and so she had to force me to disguise myself. Wow, this was seriously messed up. Keep your identity a secret by all means or we're doomed. Understand? I was in complete shock, but I knew I had to be more careful from then on. For the whole week after, Mrs. Sanchez seemed to be in a good mood. One day, she even asked me to go shopping with her. But a wedding dress studio? Is there a wedding coming, ma'am? Yes, and it's yours, you filth! You have to pay for your mom's karma for stealing my husband! So she knew everything? I tried to bolt away, but immediately got caught. Then she took me to this luxurious house, and guess who I met? Kaylee, what are you doing here? Uh, Austin? W what? What do you want? I was still bewildered when a man pushed a boy in a wheelchair into the living room. Hi, Mr. Fisher. About our arrangement, this is the bride here. She and Ivan here will make the perfect couple. Hope you like this gift as my thanks for your favor. My blessings for the marriage and your family. Dad, what is she talking about? Ivan will get married to this girl. I've already settled everything so that Ivan can have a bright future without worrying about anything. Excuse me? I've had to put aside my art dream to enroll in business school, as you wished, and now you want to control my brother's life too? I object to this marriage, because I love her! Then he pulled me away, leaving Mr. Fisher frozen in shock. Kaylee, I'm so sorry you had to meet my dad in such an awful way. I promise to never let anyone treat you like this again. No worries. I have to thank you instead. Your words really woke up the courage in me. Austin offered to help me talk things out, but it's time for me to fight for my own good. I came back home to see Mrs. Sanchez flying into a rage. How dare you bring your face back into this house! You cruel woman! I will not marry someone else just to pay off your debt! Right at that moment, Selena walked in, and she literally turned into a bull. How dare you do that to my child! I had to stop her from lunging towards Mrs. Sanchez. So how about what you all have done to me? Do you know what I've been through all these years? Her mom stole my husband, and you just expect me to put it aside? Then, she collapsed and burst into tears. Suddenly, I felt bad for her. I'm sorry for everything that happened to you, but it doesn't mean you have to punish yourself with it, or grant yourself the right to dictate others like that. She owes you nothing, and you have no right to control others' lives. Right after that, Selena and I packed our stuff and left the house. Walking through that door, we felt more free than ever before. After all that drama, it took us some time to get our lives back on track. 
From all the money Selena had saved working as a maid, she was able to open her own bakery and take back control of our lives. And so do I. Finally, I'm back to my princess style. But after all those craziest things happened, something never changed. Oh my god, oh my god, we're half-sisters! Yay! Ah, uh, my mom said she felt so guilty about what happened, but asked me to keep it a secret. Oops. And about that guy, you ask? He worked things out with his dad. And guess what? He's in art school now. Okay, now tilt your head to the right. Yeah, like that. Gosh, that dress makes you look like a fairy princess. Who dare to make a princess stay still like a statue for more than one hour? Huh? The charming artist? Shh, it's almost done. I beg your pardon. Aha! A snowstorm's coming! Perfect for a race. Let's go, my loyal soldiers! Looks like a big storm, guys. Shall we head home? Scared already? Cowards! I was born and raised in the snow. This is nothing. Then I signaled for Bam and Holly to speed up, but they stopped and barked nonstop instead. Is that pile of snow moving? I hurriedly ran over to check. Oh, M.G., it's a boy. No, an angel with blonde hair. My heart was racing. Is this love at first sight? H help me... No matter how much Elden and Era objected, I insisted on bringing this guy back to my place. I had to take care of him myself. Oh, looks like he'd woken up. Are you okay? Where am I? You're in my house. I'm Brenna, by the way. I found- Oh, God. Huh? What's wrong? Something on my face? Um, no. It's just that you're too beautiful. Like a real-life Snow White. Then he said his name's Beavis. He came here to travel, but unfortunately was met by the snowstorm. Yeah, it's gonna snow heavily in the next couple of days, so you should stay here until you recover. After a few days, Beavis got better, so I showed him around. On the sledge. Although Bam and Holly were practically just walking, Beavis still freaked out so much, he huddled up against me. <laughs> Hold on tight! I'm speeding up! We went up a hill, then through a pine forest, and arrived at, ta-da, probably the biggest frozen lake he had ever seen. I taught Beavis how to drill a hole in the ice, then he excitedly dropped the fishing line. The following days, I continued taking him sightseeing, and we were basically inseparable. We went to see polar bears kayaking among the icebergs. I taught him how to make instant snow by spraying boiling water into the cold air, and we even watched the spectacular auroras together. Wow, I've never seen such beautiful scenery before. Yeah, and I'd never seen such a beautiful face before. Just like that, Beavis spent day after another with me here in the Arctic. It's been so much fun, but for some reason, my friends Elden and Era were not having any of it. They seemed to hold grudges against him or something. One time when I was arranging supplies in the root cellar, I heard Beavis's ear-piercing scream. I hurriedly checked and saw a white fox dashing out, followed by giggles outside the window. You're such a chicken, big city boy. It's just an extra-large kitty. Then Elden and Era burst into laughter. Ugh, can those two show a little hospitality? At dinner, I cooked him my signature dish as an apology to Beavis for those naughty friends of mine. He was totally cool about it and even told me stories about his friends back at home and about their lives in Florida. Whoa, it sounds so magical. I wish I could lounge around on a beach and soak up the sun while enjoying my coconut drink too. I went to sleep dreaming about the beautiful urban life. Suddenly, a knock on my bedroom door woke me up. I stumbled to answer it and saw Beavis. Hey, Brenna, could you take me to the toilet? It's too dark outside and that fox might come back. <laughs> How cute! He's really good at coming up with excuses to be with me. W while waiting for Beavis, I planned out what we're going to do tomorrow. As he got back from the outhouse, ooh, I couldn't contain my excitement and told him right away. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I'm all better now. Maybe it's time for me to go home. Huh? Why so sudden? I'm sorry, but I really can't take this anymore. No, how could my first love end this fast? It hasn't even started. Brenna, it's so tough for me to live here. I don't want to boil ice every time I need a cup of water or go to the toilet out in the freezing cold. And how tiring that we can only go around on sleds. But even if we had a car, there's literally nowhere to go in this gloomy place. But still, I've endured it all this whole time because I can't leave you. I think I'm in love with you. Beavis, I... How about you going to the city with me so that we could stay together? Oh my, it turned out that we both have feelings for each other, but because of that, he had to suffer in silence. Such a sweet guy. And it's true, he wasn't built for this harsh climate. He didn't belong here.
The next morning, I told Eldon and Ira that I wanted to hang out in Miami for some days. Rena, I don't think it's a good idea. That pansy boy must have coaxed you to do this. Don't buy those sweet words. I tried my best to explain how nice and polite Beavis was, but they wouldn't listen. Girl, he got you all blinded. You've only known him for a few days, not enough to tell what kind of person he is. Can't believe you're just one of those shallow girls. Who are you calling shallow? Yeah, right. I was blinded. Blinded by his kindness. Then I stormed off, leaving Eldon and Ira behind. I just worry about you. Yeah, right. Worry? Or are you just jealous of me? I came home to a shivering Beavis. He couldn't stand this freezing weather anymore, and I couldn't bear seeing him like this either. So I told Beavis that I would go with him. Look how happy Beavis was, and I too was excited to visit his hometown. It's gonna be fun. It took only less than two days for us to arrange things out, buy the tickets, ask Ira to look after Bam and Holly, and we're good to go. After a long flight, we're finally here. It looks like a completely different world in front of my eyes. Crowds of people rushing left and right. Suddenly, I spotted something. Oh, that looks just like my Holly. What a spoiled husky. At that age, my two buddies were already the best sled dogs in the area. Oopsie. City folks don't seem too friendly, do they? Huh? What else? Why is it moving so fast and nonstop? While I hesitated to take a step, Beavis suddenly carried me up in the air. Don't worry, I got you. Oh boy, he's so sweet. Beavis then got me transformed into a city girl. He took me shopping, then got my hair dyed. I really like my silky black hair, but Beavis said this looked better on me. This too, baby girl. This is a tattoo parlor, isn't it? Seeing my confusion, Beavis explained that couples here usually get tattooed on important occasions, and today marks the first day that you walk into my world, so I want it imprinted in my heart. So Beavis and I got matching tattoos that he chose, a weird-looking red shape behind the ears. It might not look pretty, but was definitely unique enough to be special for just us two. Once we were done shopping, we went to a luxurious villa. Oh my, is he taking me to his parents? I'm so nervous, not sure how I should behave when Beavis comforted me. They were nice, don't worry, just do as they tell you to. Just then, the main door opened. Everyone turned to look at us full of excitement. This must be the first time Beavis took his girlfriend home then. Uh, hello, hello everyone, I- Suddenly a man walked straight over and lifted my chin. Very similar, but- But this but that, just look at her birthmark, it's Demi. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. Our beloved daughter has returned. I was still processing everything when everyone rushed to hug me and bombarded me with questions. I turned to Beavis for help, but where is he? What's going on? I tried to explain that I was Brenna, born in the snowy Arctic. Both my parents had passed away and this was my first time leaving my hometown, but to no avail. My precious daughter, Beavis told us everything. You fell in the woods and had a concussion, so you're having a temporary memory loss. Just get rested for now, okay? Oh, where is Beavis then? I gotta ask him something. Don't worry, your savior will be well rewarded. You'll see him tomorrow. <sighs> everything happens so fast, I'm totally lost. But the most I could do now is to wait until tomorrow. I'm sure Beavis will clear things up. Upon catching sight of Beavis, I immediately unloaded it all onto him. Shush, just listen to me first. Turned out, Beavis worked here for the Atchley's family. He escorted their daughter, Demi, on a trip to the mountains, but she ran away. Mrs. Atchley was utterly furious about this and used his ill mother to blackmail him into finding Demi. That's why he risked going out into the snowstorm where we met. But why me? I have nothing to do with Demi. You and Demi look just like twins. <gasps> when I saw you, I couldn't believe my eyes either. I did what I did because I was worried for my mom. I hope you can forgive me and help us, please. I'll soon find Demi. So, you were only using me? No, I'm truly in love with you, Brenna. I didn't want to be away from you, and you deserve a much better life here, with me. But just wait until I find Demi, then we will run away and live happily together. Poor Beavis. He seriously had the worst luck. If I were him, I guess I would do the same. So I reluctantly lived as Demi. Luckily, her parents thought I lost my memory, which made it not too hard to be her. One day, I received a text from Eldon. I suddenly remembered that I'd been away from home for almost a month. I wonder if Bam and Holly miss me. To say I was not one bit homesick would be a lie. But there's no way I'd speak to Eldon. So I called Era to catch up on things and asked for her help in the search for Demi. It had been a few days already, but neither Ira nor Beavis had heard anything about Demi. Feeling too restless, I went for a walk in the garden. Wait, what's that noise? Elden? See what you got yourself into, idiot. Told ya, I saw right through him. Why are you here? And what are you talking about? 
Era already told me. Beavis obviously only sees you as someone else's replacement. He doesn't love you. Let's go home. No, let me go. Stop bothering my girl. Leave me alone, please. You're only making things worse. This place has everything and it's much better than a hellhole in the middle of nowhere. Live there all you want. Don't drag me down with you. Elden immediately let my hand go. He didn't say another word, but gave me a disappointed look. Was that too much? Well, he's the one who kept sticking his nose in others' business. Who is he to control me? After that day, I still saw him lurking around the mansion sometimes. So annoying. Who in their right mind would be out in this scorching heat? Today, Mom, I mean Mrs. Ashley, suddenly took me shopping. I guess having a family like this isn't too bad, huh? She said tonight I was attending an important dinner party, so I had to put on this tight dress along with a pair of killer heels. They looked pretty good, but I really couldn't breathe. Jeez, how can anyone do this? It's literally harder than walking on thin ice. Ah! Phew, that was close. Thank you, sir. I- Careful, I can't be around to protect you all the time. Alden, why is he still so kind to me? I wanted to say something to him, but Mom already signaled for me to hurry up from afar. I rushed to the car, leaving him there. Thanks to Mom's preparation, the guys there were staring at me without blinking, especially the special guest. Mom told me that I was supposed to be smiley and friendly to Otis, but how was I supposed to do that when he kept rambling all these boring stories? My eyes wandered around, searching for Beavis and an excuse to leave. What are you looking for, sweetie? The most important person is already right in front of you. Ugh! I pushed him away, then ran off. Ah, uh, there Beavis is! We should get out of this boring place! Oh, Mrs. Ashley's here too? What? That's it? I risked being in danger just to find her and bring her back to you. Don't take me for a fool. I'm only her stepmother, but I can tell that girl isn't Demi. I just let you off since she resembled her quite a bit. You're in no position to demand. But didn't you get Otis all smitten also? Isn't that all you care about anyway? So give me my money. I had to rack my brain to sweet talk that girl into coming here. That means your sickly mother doesn't exist either, does she? Oh, sweetie, you've heard it all. So what if that's true? You won't get a dime. I'll expose your scheme. Where are you going, sweetheart? It's bedtime. So my phone was confiscated and I'd been locked in this room for three days straight. They wanted me to give in and date Otis, but no way. I tried every possible way to escape, but always ended up getting caught. One morning, I was woken up by dogs barking. Annoyed, I went to the balcony to check and saw Elden and Bam. Elden signaled for me to stay calm and flew a paper plane to me, then swiftly left. Let's see. <gasps> Fine then, if that's what he wants. Let's end things here once and for all. I agreed to date Otis like the Ashleys demanded. I even enthusiastically chose my own outfit, did my makeup with a cute hairstyle. Mr. and Mrs. Ashley were very pleased with that. They couldn't hide their excitement and even stood at the gate to welcome Otis when he came to pick me up. As his supercar arrived, Otis, the preppy guy, had just stepped out when Eldon signaled Bam to charge at him and scared him away. Meanwhile, the Ashleys were screaming for security. I was gonna leave in the midst of the chaos, but... Don't you dare run away! Ugh! Holly jumped out of nowhere and made Beavis fall to his knees. Holly then bit on his pants and dragged him around. Good job, baby! Right then, a car stopped in front of us and a girl stepped out who looked just like me. <gasps> this must be Demi! Who are you? Why do you look exactly like my daughter? What kind of father are you to not recognize your own child? This is precisely why I ran away from home. After that, Demi exposed her stepmother and Beavis's evil plan in my stead. Demi's dad frantically apologized to his daughter and admitted that he'd always been so caught up with work that he overlooked family and his wife's scheme. Get out of my sight at once and don't even think about bringing a dime with you. Then Eldon dragged me into the car and in the driver's seat was... Era! Thank you, Ira. Just me? Eldon did most of it. I shyly looked over at Eldon. Thank you, and I'm sorry. It's okay, we're friends after all. I'll take care of you at all costs. Um, uh, anyway, just hope that you've learned your lesson now, Brunna. Not all that glitters is gold. Eldon's right. This beautiful city is glamorous, but I don't belong here. I belong to the wind and snow, to the winterland I call home. Time to go back. The trip to the city was like a fever dream, but let's leave it all behind, cause I'm busy racing with Elden. As expected, he's always as slow as a turtle. Hi, this is for you. For me? What's the occasion? The day we stop being friends. Brenna, what do you say if we become more than friends? Just another beautiful Sunday. I was bragging to Nanny Emma about my wonderful adventure. Goodness, that's incredible. 
Weren't you scared? Of course not. Dad taught me. Why are you still here, Amy? Get ready for your piano lesson! Oh, it's Mom. Again. She rushed in, snatched the phone out of my hand, said, Go now or I'll delete all these videos. Okay, just delete them. Nothing you do could ever make me care more about those noise-making logs. Then I leapt to my room. Always ballet and piano and violin. What kind of mother forces her kid to do things they don't like? Ugh, I won't back down this time. I have my videos all backed up online anyway. She can't control me. What? Huh? What else? I turned around to see Mom drop to her knees. No, no, it can't be. Just this morning, my husband was still... Dad had suffered a stroke on a trip to survey a gem mine and they couldn't reach the hospital in time to save him. How could that be? He's not only my dad, he's my bestest friend. I bet the news is just as hard to deal with for my sister Briona, as she was always the one who went on business expeditions with him. He's the best dad we could ever ask for. But he's gone, and it felt like Emma and Briona were the only people who really loved me now. Just last week, dad was sitting here, next to me. Darling, it's not good for you to just sit home and wallow. Why don't you get out of here for a few days? And go where? Next week, your sister is going on a trip to a new mine. You can tag along. I'm sure she'd enjoy the company. I don't know. I don't like business trips. I'll bet you can make time for some adventures while you're there. There's bound to be hiking and things you like to do. Since when does mom support any of my hobbies? She really must not want me around, huh? If that's what she wants. Okay then, sure. We were already running late for our flight when Briona realized she had forgotten her passport. I offered to stay with her, but she insisted that at least one of us should make the flight. She assured me she'd be back in time for the next flight and we'd see each other soon. So I hugged her goodbye and headed toward the gate. While waiting for Briona to arrive, I've already booked myself a skydiving session, as recommended by the hotel's receptionist. This thing is right up my alley, but... The weather doesn't look too good. Are you sure this is normal? 100%. That's what makes it special here. People come from all over just for these winds. This is what you call extreme sports, isn't it? Yeah, right. Bring it on. So on the count of three, I was free-falling. It was an unrivaled exhilaration. The ultimate thrill. Until I deployed my parachute. Instead of gently floating to the ground, I was carried away by gust after gust of wind. Then, I blacked out. I slowly opened my eyes. What has happened? Am I in heaven now? I look around to see nothing but a beach, framed by a dense forest. This place was clearly deserted. Maybe not so deserted. There I saw a group of tribal people, dressed in strange clothes, wielding spears. I tried to move closer to get a better look, but game over. They all turned to my direction. I ducked down immediately, but their footsteps grew louder. I held my breath, wishing for a miracle. Oh no, this is definitely my end. But unexpectedly, the hand pushed me down further into the bushes, as if they were trying to hide me. I looked up and saw it was a man talking to the other in a native language. The talking stopped. Seemed like the rest had left. Thank you, thank you so much, handsome mister. Sorry for bothering you. I'm gonna get going now. I may have let you off, but the others won't. These people are aggressive and will attack any intruder. Oh, he can speak English? Nice! I'm safe now! As I followed him through the forest, he stayed quiet, but I couldn't help brimming with questions. Where did you come from? Why are you here? You're not a local, right? Are you a scientist? Can you at least tell me your name? Silas. Okay, Silas. May I borrow your phone to call my sister? She'll pick me right up. Do you think I'd be here if I had a phone? I also got here by an accident a couple of years ago. Living like one of them is the only way to survive around here. At least until someone comes to save us. No, no, that can't be. It wasn't a deserted island, but I was certainly deserted on it. We arrived at a cave on the other side of the island where, according to Silas, the locals never roam around. You'll be safe here. I'll be right back. I didn't need him to take care of me. He may have stayed here for years, but I won't. I'll escape. It wouldn't be so hard to build a raft, right? So I gathered some logs. You hungry? Silas came back and threw something wrapped in leaves. Ah! 
Get these gross bugs away from me. I would rather starve. <laughs> these are a delicacy. You have no taste. Stay here. Don't do anything stupid. It's getting dark, so I had no choice but to go to sleep hungry in the stuffy, mucky cave. There's dirty moss and bugs everywhere. Ew! At the break of dawn, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up to continue working on my raft. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Now goodbye, stupid island! But no! My beautiful raft crumbled and sank as soon as it touched the water. Feeling defeated, I laid on the sand in frustration. Suddenly, I heard a whistle. Hmm? Silas? How am I supposed to get up there? Am I his pet or something? What gives? Making me walk all the way up here? Mind you, I haven't eaten in a day. Then let's go get breakfast. But get changed first. He then took me to a river and showed me how to catch fishes. What do you mean I'm supposed to get my breakfast with this stick? Watch and learn, princess. Then Silas jabbed the spear into the water again and again until it's full of fishes. Okay, wanna challenge me? Psst, that's easy. Only, it's not. It's like the fishes could read my mind. It's been like half an hour and still nothing. There's plenty of fish in the sea, but somehow you can't catch any. Don't expect anything from my batch. Whatever, I'm not hungry. I don't need him. My sister will surely come and get me out of here on our private chopper soon. But Silas was really rubbing it in, grilling fish in front of me until the delicious smell filled my nose. But no way I'd give in to this. This is your best bet. Unless you want to try grilled rat or cicada or... Fine, gimme. <laughs> when we first met, I thought you were cute. But after seeing this... Ugh, this smug Tarzan. Full now? <laughs> then it's time for work. Work? So you're only keeping me around to be your slave? Do you want to keep living in that cave? You shouldn't steal the bugs home like that. We continue to walk deeper into the jungle until we reach this huge tree. We should build you a shelter up there. You'll be safe from the wildlife, and the natives don't go to this area. Does it need to be up so high? If they are that dangerous, how come you survive here this long? Are you playing me? <sighs> I got really lucky. I was swept away by a storm while sailing alone. And when I washed up here, the natives were so ready to, you know, send me to God. But thankfully, the chief's daughter, Nora, desperately begged her father to let me live. And for some reason, he did. That wouldn't happen to just anyone. Oh, this Nora girl must have been caught in some love at first sight. That's why you stayed here all this time. So romantic. Stop wasting time. Let's get to work. Building a shelter proved to be more difficult than expected. And Silas proved to be quite bossy. Hand me the big branch. Bigger. Amy. Rattan rope. Give me another knife. Just wait a second. Let me catch my breath. You were so determined a few minutes ago. Go take a break. I want to finish this before sunset. I sat there, watching Silas work as the afternoon turned to dusk. And I must have dozed off for a while, as when I woke up, the treehouse was done. To be honest, it was better than what I expected from him. But where is he? I looked around, but the only thing I found was his scribbles on the ground. Stay here. I was glad to have my own shelter, but there was nothing to do to pass the time. Suddenly, there was a sound. Must be coming from the tribe. I followed the direction of the sound, hoping not to get lost. But soon enough, I found a clearing where a group of the natives were gathered around a huge bonfire. They were chanting something. Others were dancing, others cheered. It looked like they were having fun, which hit me with a wave of homesickness. For a moment, I was so lost in their celebration that I forgot I was being stealthy. Uh-oh, not again. I could have tried to run, but I froze. Thankfully, Silas stepped forward, telling the others to stay. As he approached, we made eye contact briefly before he signaled people that the coast was clear, then gave me a quick wink before returning to the fire. Shortly after I returned home, Silas did too. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm not kidding when I say it will be very bad if they find out about you. I'm sorry. I'm just scared and lonely. I'm all by myself and my family must be looking for me everywhere. To my surprise, Silas came over to comfort me. Everything's gonna be alright. I got you. Who? Where? How are you here? She clearly didn't know much English, but her weapon pointed at me was enough to know that she was angry. Silas immediately ran over to calm her down. I didn't know what they were saying, but she left, though not before giving me one last dirty look. Turned out it was Nora. Oh, what a relief! An acquaintance! Why didn't you tell me earlier? Don't celebrate too soon. Nora insisted you leave immediately. 
Oh, she knows how? Then I don't have much of a choice whether I stay or leave here, do I? Don't worry. I'll take care of Nora. And he must have, because the days passed by and the natives never came to drive me out. Silas continued to visit me every day, bringing cloves, teaching me how to pick fruit, swing on branches. Soon the work turned to play. He started teaching me tribal dances and vocabulary, and we visited the waterfalls and lakes around the island. It's pretty fun. It felt like going on adventures with my dad again. Confident in my knowledge of the island, I started to venture out on my own. But Silas didn't prepare me for this. A leopard showed itself and slowly moved towards me. I tried to stay composed to find a way to escape, even though every bit of me was freaking out, when suddenly, Nora jumped down from nowhere and petted the leopard as if it was her little kitten. She gave it a fish and the kitty just happily ran away. Thank you so much. I'm Amy, Silas's friend. Silas, mine. Yes, he's all yours. I hate him so much. I wouldn't even touch a strand of his hair. Silas? Ew. No, no. Nora huffs loudly before leaving. Here. Or maybe I shouldn't share it with you since you hate me so much. Oh, stop it. My life was on the line. It was not time to confess my feelings. Oops, what did I just say? I continued to stutter, making lame excuses. You're not even listening to me, are you? You haven't heard a thing I've said. Huh? What did you say? He grinned and left without another word. I couldn't stop smiling at the silly bracelet. The island isn't really that bad. I have the freedom I've always wanted. I wake up with the sunrise and have things like this. This really is the life. One day, the sun had already set and Silas still hadn't come over. I was starting to worry when he arrived with... Nora? Silas said she wanted to bring me some clothes. I was relieved that she finally wanted to make peace, but her expression confused me. When I thanked her, she didn't say a thing or even smile. We sat around the fire. Silas and I talked about one thing after another. Oops, we might have forgotten about Nora. But the language barrier really is a big deal, you know. And so she just sat there sulking. Suddenly, she stood up, causing hot coal to splatter all over me. Silas hastily helped me clean my hands as Nora stormed off. Is she okay? Maybe you should go follow her. But Silas reassured me she'd be fine and went to find aloe vera sap for my burns. I think she misinterprets our relationship. Does she? Because I too thought there was something going on. I was too surprised, but managed to gather myself enough to reply clumsily. Says who? I don't think you've formally courted me, sir. Tomorrow will be our first date, then. In the mushroom forest. What do you say? I was glad Silas had saved this place for a date, because everything about it was curious and beautiful. Before long, I had wandered far ahead of Silas. I knew I had gone too far, but something drew me deeper into the forest. I walked along this cave. As I thought, I saw a ray of light at the end. And there really was. The cave was not a dead end, but it was just covered by vines. And, oh my god, this is like a whole nother paradise that hasn't been discovered. And there was wreckage of an old helicopter. I immediately called Silas over, and he seemed to not have any idea about this either. We explored the helicopter the whole morning, but it was nothing except a rusted hunk of junk. We were about to leave when Silas hit a button, and the radio came to life. We had found our new hobby. Since then, we went there every day, listening to music and pre-recorded content on the stereo. But eventually, we somehow got a faint radio signal. And for the first time, we had some connection to the outside world. I normally didn't care so much for news, but my interest was piqued by a familiar-sounding story. Right after the death of the biggest name in the gem industry, his wife was kicked out of the house. Any relations to the missing of the youngest daughter? Who will be the winner of the fight for his inheritance? Was this real? Were they talking about my family on the radio? Why would my mother leave? I then recalled my mother's strange behavior before I left. She, for the first time, encouraged me to go on an adventure. And I somehow ended up here. Was it even a coincidence? Oh no, how could a mother do this to her own daughter? Calm down. I believe there's more to this. Don't jump to conclusion yet. Personally, I don't think tigers eat their young. Maybe, maybe not. There's only one way to find out. I need to go home. Immediately. Bonjour! I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment- Boo! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment! <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. 
And he's a massive pain in my... Uh -huh. Anyway, I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine until our parents lost everything in stocks and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night I went downstairs to get some water and saw mom and dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day I told him that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric... Well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie. While he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my Nice trip. But this is more urgent. So I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money. Just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? B but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad? Duh. Check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. 
I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts. Through fear, your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob-level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's often away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine. He's really sweet, and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment. So I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough. I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How was I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, mom and dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave us all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned. And he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him. So we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? 
Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip-sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip-sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip-syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. What the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along, and when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you? Uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the excess money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew! All that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now, I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. 
Thanks to Cedric Rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A male from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity.